Okay, this year prior to the big finale. Legends Rugby Showdown. Legends match. There will be a Legends game. Winning captains since 1995. Captains Lok Kumar. Out of the Park. Kalim Hitupukatte. Captains were won. Just the other. Juni Vishyatravinda. Milo Trophy. Finals Davase. Between the Milo Whites and the Milo Greens. Fans to come and join with us. Yeah, and I hope you all enjoy. Uh, witness the game. Knockout final like a Balanath. I hope all of you guys will be there. I think Aradhana Karnoa. Kena Mamad Balaburutte Noa. It will be a great day to recall the memories. It's going to be a new experience, fun day before the start of the final. Hope you guys could join us and watch the game as well. The pull of the crown, the overpowering of a tackle, the thrill of scoring, the feeling nothing compares with. Myler President's Trophy Final between St. Joseph's and Isipathana on 24th June at 7 p.m. Live and exclusive on Dialogue Television Channel 1, Papare.com and Dialogue My TV. Aya used to say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's the day everything changed. Milo Energy, from the goodness of milk, malt, barley and chocolate, brings out the best in you. Milo, fueling the winning spirit. Nestle, good food, good life. The All Blacks beat the British and Irish Lions down in Auckland and we are here in Colombo for the Milo Finals Knockout. Welcome to the Papra.com live broadcast between Isipatana and St. Joseph's College. And uh, it's a beautiful evening in Colombo. We'll be playing this match under lights, but a lot more to talk before we get into the game. Uh, joining me on commentary is uh, Paul Toya. Paul, very good evening. A very happy day for you. A very good evening to you and very good evening viewers. And, uh it is a happy day for me. I'm very pleased with the result really that happened earlier with, from Eden Park. Um, the, the All Blacks came into this match with a few question marks um, about whether they can handle the Lions' um, rushing defence, whether they can handle Conor Murray's um, kicking game, and they handled it with a blom. And uh, I think their captain came in without much uh, game time, and he played for 75 minutes and played like a champion. And um, I'm sure, as we have a look at the trophy there, the Milo Trophy, the President's Cup. Um, I'm sure that's what they'll be. The, the teams will be wanting from their captains today in, in today's final. Yeah, it's a big game. St Joseph's uh, College taking on Isipatana College. It's a big game. It's a big game for both teams, and it's a big game for Milo as well. The 25th year that they've been sponsoring, and it's a big game for all of us here at the Papri.com as well. The two captains here, St Joseph's College. Uh, and Isipatana College, Vinul Fernando and of course Chamod Fernando will be leading in the absence of uh, Sumuduran Kodge. It's a big occasion and it's for uh, for under-19 team playing under lights for the first time in the season. It's going to be an exciting one. It is an exciting occasion and it's a big game for the boys. It puts a full stop to the end of the season, this this match. So it's a build-up of, uh, what are you looking at, like maybe eight, eight or nine months of play, your plan... Um, you train this pre-season. We're already talking about pre-season for next year already, but we still haven't finished off this season. And um, so it's all that build up of you, and, and you finally get to this point where you get to play in the lights, the crowd's already streaming in, there's, an, there's people in the stands, there are more people arriving um, to come and play under lights at this spectacular venue. It's a great venue. Um, there's not too much heat. The ground's in perfect condition. It's perfect, perfect conditions for playing rugby here today. As you can see, it's 25 years since Mahilo has been hosting this President's Trophy and we had various various schools and leaders taking this game home and we'll, we'll have a look at them and what they had to say about this great experience. As a school kid, a lot of them have grown, grown up in the corporate sector and wherever they are, they're doing well and this is what their experience is. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the captains. I can remember in 1996 where we lost to Trinity College in Kandy playing tennis side. That was our first tournament for the season. As a rugby player, I would say it's always been a team. 
which motivated me to play the game. Came back to Colombo, and, uh, start focusing on strengths and start brushing up on our weaknesses and then got our team together and managed to emerge uh, the league champions and beat Trinity College first time in Candy. Api ekdasam se anuhate aurudde tibicha Milo Trophies tunem ranasa puna isipatena tamai champs hune. Ilangata ekdasam se anuhate tibicha Milo Tennis I tournament ekai Milo League tournament ekai dekhema api ranasa puna Milo Champions Trophy ke api ta semi final leke isipatena tamai hambo ne. Ting api ta tibune isipatena beat karan na duo dai game ya play karna. Api major trophy ekak din la tibbe na. अपे अगर इतिहास है टमा नमूद दिदाह वसरे अपे कंडा में किधर टे कैसे हो अपे टमे नेतियों ने दे अपे लाभांगन डोने की ना डैडी कैपेबिली में डैडी परमार्थ तें टमाई कंडा में किधर टे क्रीड़ा करे नमूद अपे कैसे हो किसी में तारंगे एक पराजय टे पद तुमने अपे मुलु वर्षे बुरावट में � I'm a captain in 2002, the Royal College Rugby Team. What's unique about this rugby team is uh, from the junior age groups, that's from under 13 to the first 15, we have been uh, playing uh, together and uh, molded well, I guess, and uh, actually managed to win and be unbeaten at the uh, Milo Trophy. And I think that is what is the most unique thing about this team. In 2003, we were B-Division League champions. In the knockout tournament, we had decided among our team to win this match by keeping the discipline in a very high level. We maintained our discipline really well without giving any yellow card, uh, red card or any penalties. Milo knockout uh, finals, we played with St. Thomas's. Same uh, team discipline uh, was maintained by uh, the, all the team members. Final knockouts. Bagai actually langkah langkah ini, orang yang anchor lagi perlu na. Mata, abis itu kan dat baru lagi, sama ella itu, katia, orang yang ada illa, kata agar la, kira, mereka orang kan ni bangun ni, mana unat, apa itu tek kan, jadi mereka orang Indo na, biar kau mungkin lah kapal rusan doh ni. Ini bela be, ini motivation, keng, orang injury kan, hitu lewat na, mana kan kau orang macam macam kan, sel langkah lah, macam ni team mereka ni sangat sama orang ada tamu nasional sel langkah. In 2006, we were left with three senior players who played in 2005. During our first team talk, I was inspired by the team, how they were hungry for the championship. Before the practice start, we come to the grounds and we do our individual trainings. After a match, the whole team get together. We talk what were our mistakes and we error proof it by talking to one another. The same mistake won't happen in the next match. So all the efforts from everyone synchronized and we delivered to the college by becoming double champions for the first time. We knew that it was going to be a tough game but it was very close until the last moment. We had a sudden death and then when we didn't score we had a second sudden death and that was when Arjun Manoharan scored uh, at three points and up from a, about a 40 meters away and won that game for us, which is something that we would remember for the rest of our lives. The confidence we got throughout that season helped us when, when we got to the final for that Milo Trophy. We always wanted to be number one. We always wanted to be champions. Because it was a too long stay for Mother Trinity without a championship trophy in her cabinet. The team made me passionate to win. It was after 18 long years, Trinity brought back the Milo Knockout Trophy on 30th of September 2009. Just last year, Milo President Trophy ke same final same Peters College. It was a good mistake. We were passing, we were kicking, we were in the same Peters tight match. We were in the last 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 match. Welcome back. That was the legends of uh, uh, the captains of teams from 1995 all the way up to 2016. And if you if you just run through this, uh, Paul, you can see a, a legend players like Zulki Hamid, Faroyal, Fazil, Marija has turned out to be an absolute legend in the Asian circuit, not only in Sri Lanka. And then you have Veranda Virakuri also from King Sud. Purnaka Delpachitra was excellent for St. Peter's. Murad Ramzin for Trinity, Keith Guru Singer, Rahul De Silva for Wesley in 2013 was one of the best scrum up he's still around. And then Kushan Indunil in 2016. These are some of the guys who have 
played through this as you can see the crowd is building up slowly but it's it's an experience that they love to share and i'm sure these these teams today the boys who will come out today also will want to do, do that yeah that look what some what they all what they all share and what they all have in common is that they know what it takes to win and um it's something that it's something that you don't learn in school and something that you can't learn from a book um it's being able to get a group of men to gel together to give everything to win and and um you'll see that um when corp when corporates or when when places go for a um go for job interviews they'll ask about um your leadership skills and those leadership skills that um these players that have just spoken on tv the legends those leadership skills that they have that they learn from the game of rugby they transfer them directly into uh the business world and into into later life and it's it's the lessons that these boys here that are going to come out and run out in front of us today they're going to learn the same lessons today that all the legends learned when they took their teams to victory yeah they'll be coming out in few minutes we are nicely and slowly building up for this uh, and in about 3 hours time we'll know who will be taking this we'll be back after a short commercial break stay tuned to the papri.com Sri Lankan sports obviously even while you're traveling how do you do that well i follow I, i always keep an eye on the cricket i know the match is starting in a few more minutes uh, and the internet is a great way to do it and uh, you know initiatives like the papare.com and it gives us so much information excellent access excellent insights and i've noticed now that you know i i i played the game there are huge amount of cricket fans out there they look at things in so much detail they demand detail much more than you know we have a video analyst for us mm. great, but these guys want even more detail when it comes <laughs> to you know reading about the game and under- so i think the papare.com provides all of that beautifully so uh, you know congratulations and well done to the papare.com because for people like me and for for millions of other cricket fans around the world to have a, a deep insight an intricate look into sports and also follow um live scores results and news that's an ideal way well you're at the right place sharing the passion here with kumar sangakkara kumar thanks very much for joining us here the pull of the crowd the overpowering of a tackle the thrill of scoring the feeling nothing compares with milo president's trophy final between st joseph's and isipathan on 24th june at 7 pm live and exclusive on dialogue television channel 1 papare.com and dialogue my tv Welcome back to the race course grounds it's final time as we have been talking this to is beautiful nice and easy build up we're going towards uh, Isipathana versus St Joseph the sun has come out but it's the time the time that it has to set and the lights will take place here at race course off your screen lot of St Joseph uh, on your screen lot of St Joseph supporters they have a lot of expectations first time in the final big game big night for them Look, they had a lot of expectations at the beginning of the season. They've got a great coach who's come in, Milford, um, 
who came with a lot of success. They've got a lot of really good players. They've got a great running back line. Uh, they've got some big front rowers. So there was a lot expected of them this season. They came up with a couple of hard games right at the beginning of the season and that took a lot of their momentum away from them. Now they've got their momentum back as we see uh, as we see the referees and some officials and, and there, there's some legends there, the legends, the Milo Green team coming out. But um, their momentum came back to them as they as they grew into the season and now they, their momentum's at full swing. So St Joseph's can be full of confidence because this is as, they're playing as well as they've played all season. So um, their fans can be can be expectant um, today that they might be able to do well. Yeah, as you can see the legends coming out on your screen. Uh, we'll move into the captain's interviews, what they had to say, both Pinul Fernando and uh, Sumuduran Kotge for St. Joseph's and Nisi Patana respectively. Mam Vinul, St. Joseph's College ke rugby captain. Me paratam abhi Milo ta no kaute ke first time me kada apne rugby history ke first time me kada final le kada apu. Yaga me own tournament te ka vekatam abe school ka available din na palay ni final le ka. Yaga me me final le kada inna abhi palay ni matchi ke inang godak. टीम में के हमें के नाम गुड़ा कुछ साया दे रहा है वाके में प्रैक्टिस चल दूँगा तो उनके ऊपरी में दीला प्रैक्टिस करा है वाके में उनके उत्साह है प्रतिपाल्य के दिए टे आधा भी में इतना डाइवेल दी ना में में आप गामन में हम हर लायन ना तो आप के एक कम टागर टेक पढ़े नहीं पारे में कप्पे का आप के पास लेते रह अपने फर्स्ट मैच प्रेसिडेंट ट्रॉफी के एंथनी सामुना अपने दिन ना जैसे सेम फाइनल पीटर्स एक आदि नो देंगे अपने होंडा बियोगी अकेले से सांत जोसेफ विद्यालय अपने होंडा बियोगी अकेले मैच चेक प्रैक्टिसेस अपने पास नेक नया वह होंडर में आना अपने का होंडर में करना अपने मैच चेक तभी तो मैच चेक फाइनल � Yeah, that was both of the captains. Uh, Paul, we talk about Saint, we spoke about St. Joseph's, how they have evolved as a team throughout this season, started very slowly, got time to click as a unit. On the other hand, Isipatana, mentally tough, very strong team. They know how to win championships. They have been here before. And uh, they have, it's, it's an injury hit team, but, but they have come through the quarters and semis, very close games. And if you are injured, if you have a list of injuries in your squad, and if you can pull through victories like that, playing the entire eighty, that's that's uh, excellent. That's right. Look, uh, getting through hard games, difficult games, when you've got a depleted squad, that does a lot for your confidence. If you can do that with a depleted squad, when you start getting reinforcements coming back, then it gives you such amazing lift. As if as if Izzy Butner needed more belief. They already have the belief that they will win. I think the belief that they have comes from the belief that they're going to win the contact. So they, they believe that they're not going to go take a backward step in any contact that they have, and that belief means that they're going to win the gain line. Um, when they mentally believe that that's going to take place, that's the winning of the game right there. Um, you can talk about a kicking game, you can talk about um, dominance at set piece, but winning the gain line and winning the contact is such a major factor because it... Once you do that over and over again, the team that keeps going backwards, it's just so hard to pick yourself up and uh, continue to tackle, as I'm sure the British and Irish Lions would be able to tell you today. Yeah, so that's that's the both teams that we have spoken of. And we also have a Legends game, uh, which will be taking place in a bit. And both, uh, both the school kids are out to watch them as well, both teams. So also talking about what it takes, uh, Paul, for both teams to come and play in a big stage like this and to win. What's the key point, do you think? Well, the key point for me is a coach, well, there are lots of key points. Firstly, um, before you arrive, each player has to know exactly what his job is on the day. Um, that He knows at each position in the field, they've got to know exactly what's going to happen. And that's that comes down to the communication, well, it comes down to the training of the, during the week, but then on the field, it comes down to the communication of the leaders on at, at that particular point then all you want the boys to do is take one moment at a time firstly when you arrive at the ground enjoy the atmosphere enjoy the day 
It's a fantastic day for all these players. They've worked so hard to get here. They should come and enjoy the atmosphere and just soak it up and just experience some of the atmosphere and some of the crowd and some of the, when the lights come on. And it's, a, it's such a, it's a great occasion. So firstly, I'd have to say that that's what the players should do. Just enjoy themselves and enjoy the, enjoy the feeling of being here and concentrate on the moment. In New Zealand, they have a saying, um, they have a saying from the rowing team and it says stay in the boat don't let your mind start thinking about the finish line make your mind stay in the boat where you are so stay focused on the moment and that'll hold the players in, in, into um, the role that they have to play at one particular time so when it's time for a set piece when it's time for a scrum the props need to work, work on that particular skill they shouldn't think about anything else so while they're, while they're here now before the game they should relax and enjoy the game. They know what they need to do. And then when they go to warm up, that's what they need to concentrate on. Think about nothing else. Don't think about the lifting the trophy. Don't think about what they're going to do during the game. They need to focus on what they're doing at the time. That's the key point for me, I believe. Yeah, that's very important, isn't it? And I'm sure both coaches would have spoke about that throughout the week, uh, during training. And it, it's a big it's a big moment for both teams it's these are just young kids competing at this uh, great event yes some of them have been already picked for, for the seventh tournaments which will come back come in later but it's it's a great occasion talking about conditions it's perfect isn't it uh, Paul nice underfoot conditions a cloudy evening in Colombo the sun has just come out the time that it has to go down but it's it's perfect conditions for rugby it is perfect and as you can see around the ground the flags are completely still so there's not a breath of air in the in the not, not not a breath of wind in the air so it's it's a very even playing ground um this pitch is particularly wide it's got very deep uh dead ball areas it, it's probably as deep as you can go i think it's 20 20 meters maybe a 25 meter meter dead ball area that's going to be a factor all of these factors have to be taken into consideration when teams play um, we saw last year when Ersi Bartonet played against Royal in the final here, how um, the width of the field played in Ersi Bartonet's hand because, hands because they could spread the ball wide and they used their backs. Is that what St. Joseph's are going to use today? They've got great running backs, they attack down that 13 channel and outside the 13 channel. So there, they've got a lot of room here to play. They won't have the wind or they won't be wind assisted as they have in the last two games. But um, they've still got a, ma a magic boot in um, Centre Ratna. So is this going to be the ground for them? Is this going to be the year when they're going to come and they're going to win their first uh, President's Trophy? Spoke about Chatura Centre Ratna. Yes, Coach Anuranga Walpola, uh, the St. Joseph's forward coach on your screen. He looks focused. Um, talking about Chatura Centre Ratna, under lights, he'll be testing the Isipatana backs. On the other hand, one of the best counter-attackers in the, the local rugby season this time, Chamot Fernando at 15 for Isipatana, it will be a great contest. It will be a great contest because, um, because one, you've got, you've got a magic boot and he can kick on the fly 60 metres. You know, that's, that's a phenomenal boot. Israel Dare can do that. You know, not many players can do that. We've got a player here who's going to be playing today who can kick the ball on the fly 60 metres and then he's going to be kicking uh, Chamut Fernando who can run the ball back from his own try line so it's going to be a fantastic battle as you said yeah there you go the, uh, on your sc screen that was uh, Sanjeeva Begunavadana captain of St. Peter's College 1995 uh, rugby captain and the legends are walking out and um, we'll go for the live telecast of that He is the captain of uh, the 1996 team, Bandula Malikarachi of Isipatana College. These are great moments, isn't it, Paul? Walking onto the field after 20 years, uh, after playing for, for their school, and just to lead by that college flag in front of them, it's a proud moment. Yeah, look, there'll be great memories that they'll be having now and, and they'll be remembering the day that they came out and played in the final and won.
We welcome Vinoj Kumar Kurupanavela into Milo Greens. He was vice captain of Thurston College in 1998. The captain on that occasion was Nuan Kumar. Thurston went on to beat Zaira College Colombo 11 points to 9. In fact, it was the closest margin of victory in the finals, just two points separating the two teams. On to 1999, it'll be the introduction of Janaka De Silva for Milo Whites. He was vice captain of Isipatana. That year, Isipatana captain was Krishan Chandran. Isipatana went on to beat Ananda College Colombo 27 points to 10 in 1999. Year 2000, Chamara Vidanage, Milo Greens. He was captain of uh, Kingswood College, Candy. Kingswood uh, went on to beat uh, St. Thomas's Mount Lavinia 20 points to 17. <laughs> 2001, Ranga Pereira into Milo Whites. He was captain of Isipatana. Isipatana beat St. Peter's 2017 that year. Two thousand and two, Dushant Leuke, Milo Greens. He was vice captain of Royal College Colombo. The captain that year was Zulke Hamid, and Royal beat Wesley College Colombo twenty points to six. Year two thousand and three, Dinesh Sirivimala, Milo Whites. He was captain of Kingswood. Kingswood beat St Thomas's twenty six points to twenty two. Year 2004, Fazil Marija, Milo Greens. He was captain of Kingswood and uh, the Candy School beat Wesley 34 13. Year 2005, Eranda Virakodi, Milo Whites, captain of Kingswood. Kingswood beat St. Peter's 28 points to 3 in 2005. Year 2006, Harendra Aryavardhana, Milo Greens. He was captain of St. Peter's. St. Peter's beat Kingswood, 8 points to 3. 2007, Shanaka Gunasekara, Milo Whites. Vice captain of St. Peter's. The captain on that year was Ranuka Jasinga. St. Peter's beat Isipatana, 23-13. 2008, Purnaka Delpachitra, Milo Greens. He captained St. Peter's and the Peter Wrights beat Isipatana 16 11. 2009, Janik Jasurya, Milo Whites. He was vice captain of St. Thomas's. The Thomians uh, uh, beat uh, Isipatana 22 19, with Shavin Kapuata being the Thomian captain on that occasion. 2010, we welcome Duminda Artikala for Milo Whites, who is captain of Royal. We also welcome Stephen Nelson for Milo Greens, the vice captain of St. Peter's. The captain on that occasion being Keith Gurusinghe. You will wonder why the scheduled final in 2010 was suspended by the authorities due to a court order issued on action initiated by Isipatana. However, the two teams played a friendly encounter and the Peter Wrights beat Royal 29 points to 27. After a period of two years, the court case was dismissed and the two schools were jointly awarded the trophy. 2011, Rehan Birakon, Milo Whites, vice captain of Trinity College Candy. 
the captain was uh, Murad Ramzin Trinity BDC Patana 2110 2012 Shenal Dias Milo Greens vice captain of Isipatana the captain on that occasion being Kumendra Dharmadasa Isipatana B Trinity 2116 2013 Gavin Seagats Milo White's vice captain of Wesley the captain being Rahul De Silva, Wesley B. Trinity, 34-12. 2014, Senal Dilaka, Milo Greens, captain of Isipatana. Isipatana beat Royal, 27 points to 22. 2015, Lasindu Karuna Dilaka, Milo White's. The captain of Science College, Mount Lavinia. Science uh, went on to beat Isipatana 21-18 a couple of years ago. 2016, Kushan Indunil Silva, Milo Greens, captain of Isipatana. Isipatana beat Royal 47 points to 12. This was the highest aggregate being 59 points. It was the highest total being 47 points for Isipatana. And the biggest margin of victory being 35 points. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee for this game, Dilroy Fernando. He has been the one handling the whistle in most of the Milo President's Trophy Finals. So the two teams and the match officials are on field. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a great occasion 25 years ago when uh, Nestle, together with the, the Ministry of Education, thought about uh, this uh, concept of uh, Milo Schools Knockout Rugby. And uh, today we have two legends joining us for the team introduction of the Milo Legends Rugby Showdown. One is uh, Mr. Sunil Jayavira, presently the Special Advisor to the Honorable Minister of Education. He was then Director General of Sports of the Ministry of Education. The other one was uh, Mr. Bandule Godagi. Today he is Vice President Corporate Affairs of Nestle Lanka. 25 years ago, he was the Promotions Officer of Nestle Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, they were the two who thought about this. Joining them today would be Mr. Norman Kannangara, Vice President Beverages, Nestle Lanka, together with Mr. B. Aberatna, President of the Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association. Sanjeev Abegunodana introducing the Milo Whites, so the distinguished uh, officials. Meeting the referee, Dilroy Fernando. Now it's the turn of Bandula Malikarachi to uh, introduce uh, his team, Milo Greens, to the distinguished invitees. It's been a great occasion. It's been a great concept. And Milo, because of their involvement, have produced some outstanding talent in the field of schools rugby. They have gone on to represent the country and some of them have been acknowledged as outstanding talent in regional competitions. We would like to thank uh, additional invitees who were there to be introduced to the teams 
Mr. Sunil Javira, Mr. Bandula Ekodoge, Mr. Noman Kannangara, Mr. B. A. Abheratna, thank you very much. The match will be shown live on Dialogue TV and My TV. The live streaming on papare.com. Lot of enthusiasm. We certainly hope the weather would stay fine. There would be a few concerns for the team members, certainly the senior team members. But uh, you know, when you step onto a rugby field in front of uh, such an appreciative crowd, you know you've got to be good. And the Milo rugby is always very good. We would like to thank uh, the schoolboys who accompanied uh, the players, the legends, the heroes onto the field. Thank you very much. Carrying their respective flags. Welcome back. So those are the legends on your screen. You can see Fazil Mariga and also Harin, the 2005 captain of uh, 2006 captain of St. Peter's. They all geared up and uh, they'll be excited to be back in the field after about 20 years. Some of them leaving school. Yeah, that's right. Look, they're, they're out there. Their minds will believe that they're the same age as the, the last time they were out here playing. But as you can see, they're stretching. They're hopeful stretches as well, hoping that their body they can get their bodies prepared for what their minds are going to put themselves through. So all of these all of these legends here, all of these heroes who are playing uh, and, and, the, and the respect that they're getting is because rugby is so much about uh, tradition and legacy. And this is what all these players, they, um, they, they bring today. Yeah, on your screen there was uh, Dushant Liuke, the, wife, uh, the, the vice captain of uh, 2002 of Royal College and more, everybody have their school crest back in their chest. That, that's an extra motivation. No one will want to have that crest and play bad. They want to give their best outside because it's back uh, in their jersey. Yeah, that's right. And look, they've all, they're all returning to their glory days. In their minds, they're playing the final again. They can remember, I'm sure, they can remember the day when they ran out and they, they represented their schools on this ground. Oh, maybe it wasn't on this ground. Uh, they, they represented their schools in the final of the uh, of the President's Trophy. And um, so that'll come flooding back to them. Whether their body can catch up with their mind, that's another thing. Richie Mako said, it, if, if the body says tough, tell your mind and your body will do it. I'm sure most of them will be following that. Uh, and another thing is the referee of this game. There you go. Dilroy Fernando has come out of retirement to blow this game. He's been one of the best as well for Sri Lanka in the referee segment, uh, officiated many games in the Commonwealth Games, and uh, it, it'll, be a, it'll be coming back for memory for him as well. That's right. Look, he's a very proud referee. I, I, I was at, um, at a shop recently, and he showed me his, a, a big photo on the wall in his office of him being the linesman as Joan Lomu slid in and scored a try. He's a very proud referee, and it's... It's fantastic for him to be out here in the middle again with the blowing the whistle. So the kickoff. Let's just uh, watch uh, Paul if uh, they still have the have their skills with them. A couple, most of them are coaches here, and, and I'm sure the boys will be watching from home, and they would they also would want to bug them <laughs> if they drop a ball. That'll be that'll be. Some, something to look forward to for the boys as well who are watching this. Yeah, that's right. Look, it's all, it's all in the name of fun and also to recognise that these legends have given so much and they're, and they're, they're heroes, they're heroes, they're rugby heroes. So we're, they're playing a game of tag here and uh, so the tags you can see around that are just hanging. Um, I'm sure many of you have played tag already, but you've got five touches or five tags. The referee will keep calling it. And you just have to rip that tag off, and that means that player has to stop their play it under his legs, and they can do that five times. That's Seranda Virakodi, 
who gave that short pass off to Rehan Virakon and the Milo White score their first try. It's a well worked move, wasn't it? They looked like they were going to come into the open. They just stepped back in and uh, moved it down. They quick hands. They made a they, they made a break and there were two open actually and they ran through. So all the players of those coaches who scored that try, that's what they're trying to teach you boys. And that's what they're doing out there. It might be a bit more easy for most of them, isn't it? Since they're coaches, they know the game better, they learn the game better now. Look, it's one thing talking about it, and then there's another thing actually being able to do it. And so, um, that's the Royal Vice uh, Assistant Coach Dushant Luke making a break. Referee calling offside. So, referee Delroy Fernando, he's struggling to keep them back on side here. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a fast, he's a fast uh, defensive line that's coming up. Looks like the Whites have just gotten a um, penalty. Lovely wrap around. <laughs> Looks like the Milo Whites have their youngsters. Uh, Rehan Virakun and also around the Vira Kodi. They're trying to play around them. And on the other hand, you have some good players. There's Kushan Indunil of Isipatana. There you go. He taps and sends it out. So I think currently he's with CRNFC, so he's still playing. Um, and he'll be in the middle of a of preseason fitness. So he should be uh, fit enough to run around for the full game. As you can see, uh, viewers, the, the game's been the uh, pitch has been been shrunk, so it's not as wide as the real game, as the full game. Um, it's five meters in from one side and 15 meters in from the other side. It only goes from 22 to 22, so uh, the old legs don't have to run as far as as the uh, young boys. Fazil Marija has not touched the ball yet. He has shown some magic in the international circuit, and he still is doing the same. So. Oh, that's a nice step for old man. <laughs> Ranga, captain of uh, Isipatana College in that winning team of 2001. Here's Kushan, the youngest player on the park. Harendra. Marija yet to touch the ball. Here's Marija now stepping back. Step back inside. He's making us excited even now when he touches the ball, Paul. Yeah, look, he's an, ex he's an excitement machine. That's why every time he gets the ball, he, sing he sees things other players don't. He sees spaces that, that aren't there that he can create. That's the vice captain of St. Thomas's College. 2019. So the Whites are making some great uh, inroads here at the moment. There's lots of uh, dummies and um, stepping through the stepping through holes that aren't there. Oh, interception. Dushant Liuke, he still has on him. And the Royal College assistant coach scores the first try for the Milo Greens. Well, there's a player that knows what it takes to win. He's gotten his uh, forward back up into the winning circle this year with Royal. He uh, took a bunch of backs, turned them into forwards, and turned them into um, championship winning forwards. It's becoming a bit more intense, a bit more becoming faster than how it started. And the players are taking this a bit seriously now. Well, I'd say the fitness will start to take, take its toll though. The players won't want to give up or won't want to uh, stop running, but 
Uh, their legs might start to slow down a little. Oh, that's a lovely hit. Oh. Some nice hands, isn't it? Back. Nice offload, still having in them. Yeah, look, you can see them going forward and then taking the space, using their hands. There's a couple of little tap passes there, but didn't quite come off with the Milo Whites. So the good thing about this is that you can see this happening a lot. Sunday mornings at grounds around in Sri Lanka, um, Thursday afternoons, you can see it in, in uh, any spare area around the place. You'll see men who are a little bit past their prime reliving their old school days and uh, reliving the glory that they used to have when they were um, playing as, as schoolboy players. Yeah, especially Sunday mornings in the beach. Um, a lot of them who, li who leave school, they just still want to keep in touch. Here's Virakuri. His brother, another famous rugby player in, <laughs> in Sri Lanka. Nalaka Virakuri. Rana was having both tacks on one side. Yes, <laughs> that's a, it's a good trick. But it didn't get past the referee, Delroy Fernando. Very experienced, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, lovely short ball once again. And it's uh, Dushant Luke who gets his second try. So his, maybe his uh, position should have been on the wing. Is he the an old Rico Uani? The, the Sri uh, an older Rico Uani from Sri Lanka, scoring two tries. It was a number eight in school. Dushant Liuke. Very famous player in Sri Lanka. Played for Royal College, Candy Sports Club, CRNFC, CHNFC. Played for police. And he's one of those players who have a very good work rate. And was uh, in many of the championship winning sides as well. So he knows what it take to a legend by himself Zulki Hamid is captain not here today and he's representing Royal College here the Whites that was Bandula Malikarachi on your screen captain of Isipatana 1996 brother of uh, late Sajit Malikarachi who uh, left us unfortunately yes a foot race Rehan Virakun breaking through that's the Trinity Vice Captain in 2011. Trinity was captained by Murad Ramzin in that year, one after 18 years. Half time, so it's uh, two all. Two for Milo White and Milo Green. is a close game and I hope uh, the, the, coming, the one comes up next, kick off at seven o'clock, which, uh, which will be uh, a close affair as well. Yeah, look, if I'm not sure if you can see it, viewers, but in the back, in the um, at the end zones, at the uh, near the try lines, you've got both uh, Izzy Bartana and St Joseph's. The the uh, teams are warming up now. They're going through their paces. Um, they're all just going through individual skill sets at the moment before they come together, and then they'll work as units, um, and then they'll probably have some sort of contact session before they go back into the changing rooms. So now the boys are starting to starting to really get the blood to start flowing. Um, they'll be fully into their mode of what they need to do for this game. Um, the coaches will be talking to them, massaging them, using their mental skills to just to try to prepare the boys um, for the great challenge that's ahead. You know, the, one of them's going to be a winner, and one of them's going to come come to the ground and almost win. So it's a big occasion for both, and um, I'm sure all the boys will be very nervous. 
Yeah, just a shot before you saw the St. Joseph's team warming up. And on the far side, uh, Reza Mubarak is working with his kickers very closely for Isipatana College. He knows that one point can be very important. Yeah, that's right. Look, um, every point will be important here. There will be a lot of attacking and counter-attacking, but um, they have to take every opportunity to make sure that they take points here today. As the light uh, is slowly taking control here at uh, the race course grounds and uh, the Legends match continues, the crowd is nicely set up. It's a beautiful stadium, uh, a race course grounds and at the back of uh, the main pavilion, uh, the, build, the crowd build up is perfect. Here's Eranda Virakkodi restarting the second half of the Legends game, puts it straight out on the full. Let's see what the second half has got in store for us here. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure both teams will want to want to take away the uh, the honours here. That's some Marija magic. Yeah, unfortunately, the person who passed to was uh, out. Those cones there, there, that's out, viewers. So Players want to make sure they stay inside the field of play. Looked like they scored, but it wasn't given. Oh, that's a lovely pass. And a forward pass in the end. Maybe a little chip kick might have been the go there, but um, it's a nice pass and a nice break there by the Whites. Oh, he's through. He's through. Oh, still diving around. So the Milo Greens come back. Three, three tries to two. It looked like he was through, but he uh, stopped and he had to make a pass. So it must be that the, the uh, scrum half or the, the dummy half can't score the try. So once he'd made the break, he turned, you saw him looking around for support, trying to get someone to come and help him out because he couldn't score the try. Oh, oh. Dinesh Srimal of Kingswood in 2005, around the Virakuri, and as we speak, as he scored another try, no, referee Dilroy brings it back. And then 2007, Arano Kujasing of St. Peter's. 2009, Shavin Kapuata of uh, St. Thomas's College. 2011, Murad Ramzin of Trinity. 2013, Rahul De Silva of Wesley. 2015, Lasindu Karunathilaka of Science College. And then uh, in uh, 1996, it was Bandula Malikarachi. For Isipatana College, Nuan Kumara of Thurston in 1998, Chamara Vitanage of Kingswood in year 2000, and 2002 it was uh, Zulki Hamid for Royal, 2006 Harendra Arya once of St. Peter's, 2008 Purnaka Delpachitra of St. Peter's, 2010 Keith Gurusing of St. Peter's, 2012 Kumendra Dharmadasa of Isipatana. 2014 Shanal Dilaka of Isipatana and 2016 Kushan Indunil of Isipatana. So four points, four tries to three. Uh, the Greens lead. Here is Marija. Fazil Marija stepping and running through. There's some old legs chasing him. Shanal Dilaka now to Harendra. Oh, another interception from Rehan Virakun. That's even things up. Whites have come back. They've scored two tries in the last minute. Four points all.
players in front. Looked like they tried to take a little quick throw. Wasn't going to wasn't going to fool the referee. There's some tight old legs out there now, aren't there? Yeah, they are. Oh, oh interception and second one for Dushant Liuke. And the chase is on. Already scores the try. <laughs> and a dive too. No try, is it? No, oh, try. in fact, it was a knock forward. Here's Veera Kodi. There's a few tags there on the ground. It's probably got something to do with the, the ball coming back. Looks like White are going to retain possession. Got just over three minutes to go. So it's for all uh, seven minutes on the fifth, fifth, seven minutes and fifty seconds on the clock. The Milo Legends ball left back penalty. As we as this game uh, this game continues, Paul, let's talk about the final once again. And for people who are joining us now, how how big an occasion it can be. We just saw how big it was at Eden Park, packed stadium, forty eight thousand odd numbers. Race course, similar scenario, packed stadium, big game, and uh, it's it's something to be uh, proud of. You representing your college, and how much it how much does it mean for them to wear that jersey and walk out? Well, look, lots of these players there, they'll be, this will be the last time they'll put on their, their college jersey. And, and what a way to go out. I remember seeing the, um, the Richie McCall movie and he said, not many players get to retire on their own terms and, and tick all the boxes they want to tick. Now, if you're going to retire from a game and you're going to play your last game in your school jersey, you want it to be in an occasion like this. You want it to be at an occasion where there's a packed stadium, under lights, you're playing for a trophy. All of your friends are there. All of your friends are watching. Lots of people are watching on TV at home as well. So this is the occasion that rugby players play rugby for. Remember, the re there are lots of reasons why rugby players play rugby, but I think main, the main reason that I think they play is because they want recognition from their peers. This is the place where you come and you can get recognition from your peers. It's the, it's the very top echelon. This is where the most mental pressure when we place the bomb players, when everyone's watching, when there's a cup, when there's a trophy, when there's a the champion, the president's trophy, trophies on the line, that's when the most mental pressure is going to be put on them. That type of recognition that you get from your peers, where you can say to them, yes, my actions state that I'm going to stand up at this moment and I'm going to put myself forward and I'm going to do um, selfless acts for my team, that's the type of recognition that all rugby players want to have. And as we see the... Uh, the Legends games, Le Legend game is, is coming to a close. That's what all of these legends and all of these heroes understand. That's why they played the game as well. So the Legend games, the Milo Legend game uh, finishes off. 
here at uh, race course Milo Greens and the Milo Whites. It'll be a nice time for both teams. So the Milo Whites win five points to four. That's a surprise. I was I was just running through the team about couple of uh, couple of uh, last week actually, and I thought the Milo Greens had a very strong team. And that's that's what that's what it can happen even on a touch rugby pitch, and also even on a on a pitch like this, anything can happen. Well, especially when you've got players that have uh, mental strength and, and camaraderie like these, all these players have, and you you see them here and they're all lined up together and they take a bow in front of the packed stadium and say thank you for letting us relive our memories. We see Dilro Fernando walking off, fantastic spectacle for all these players. Great memories for them as well. Yeah, Dilroy Fernando still commands them, still has them every, every play in control. Nice to see him back on the park as well. We now join for the talk show down. Shana Kamarasinghe is ready with the talk show, the pre-match talk show. We'll be back with live action after Shanaka. Shanaka, over to you. A very good evening and welcome to the race course grounds as we look at this wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, tournament here that's going to be happening out just behind us and that's the Milo knockout trophy final it's going to be an outstanding event we've just seen the legends game which uh, was won by the Milo Whites around the Virakkoti with the uh, with the uh, big uh, try that won the match for them at the end we are here to talk about this uh, Milo knockout to uh, trophy president's uh, final with some gentlemen who have been there and done that it's going to be an outstanding uh, game that's for sure and to talk to us about that we have uh, Ria Sali who uh, was part of the 95 runner-up team of this very same uh, trophy and uh, we have Dinuk Priya Sujayaratna also who was captain of the 99 St. Joseph's team uh, one of the most successful Joe's teams uh, until this one here who are in the first final in uh, for a long time so uh, gentlemen welcome to the show good to have you both here uh, let's talk about uh, St. Joseph's first, uh, you know, the first final, the first knockout final in a long time. Must be very uh, interesting for you to be in this position. Might be very nervous also going into this game as well. The, the first big chance of a big trophy. How are you feeling? How's the camp feeling? Yeah, it's a big day, Shanaka. Yeah, it's certainly a big occasion for St. Joseph's rugby. Uh, I think the boys have uh, prepared well and uh, they are looking forward to it. I don't think uh, the pressure of a final will be, uh, will be on them. They'll go out there and do their best today. I'm sure they uh, definitely will. It's going to be an outstanding uh, game for St. Joseph's. There must be such good spirits in that changing room, having the first chance of making history for their team. But speaking about history, EC Patan has a very rich history in this uh, tournament, uh, Riaz, and they've won it seven times, going for the eighth time this time under Chamoth Fernando or maybe Sumudurang Kutke, we don't really know uh, for sure, but it has been uh, a really good season for them. They've just lost the one match. How do you see this one going? Yeah, uh, uh, like you said, uh, Sumudu will be playing today and then, uh, yes, uh, talking of the game, it's a big occasion. Uh, all in all, uh, some of the guys who represented last year also are here uh, who, who played the knockout finals. But uh, overall, uh, it will all depend how they uh, pitch into the crowd. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be uh, one of those games where AC Patan are going to draw on all their reserves. They had a tough time getting here. They had to beat uh, St. Anthony's by just a one point and then two points uh, a win in the semi-final against St. Peter's. So it's been hard going for Isipatana getting here, uh, Riaz. It's not the sort of um, dominant performance that we've seen from Isipatana sides of the past. Will that uh, be a good thing for them going into this final? Uh, I think uh, we've been put to test uh, with the previous two games and uh, we are looking forward for this game. But uh, overall, uh, our, go our boys are well fit and uh, looking forward for it. Dinuk, it was a big win against Wesley. That was probably your toughest game of the tournament so far. Then against Damaraj, they defended well, but St. Joseph's pulled away late on in the game. You've got a big forward back. You think that's going to um, do the business today for you? Yes, yeah, certainly. Even the weather conditions, I think, uh, seems better for us today. The uh, big forwards in Tehan Senaviratna and Sven Muller will have a big role to play uh, in the game. And yeah, I think uh, conditions suit our, our style of play today. And it's been a work in progress for St. Joseph's, hasn't it? Because it's been, uh, y'all have been getting better since last year, the year before that. There's been a gradual improvement. Are you happy with the way this uh, team is moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. This, uh, we have never been consistent. So that is what we are trying to bring into St. Joseph's rugby, trying to stay in the top three, uh, uh, three or two in, the, in a consistent way. 
So I think this team has laid the foundation for the future of St. Joe's Rugby and we are very happy with the progress. Riyaz, uh, consistency has been uh, one of the uh, biggest things about Isipatana Rugby. They have been at the top or thereabouts of the, uh, of the game. Let's uh, have a look at exactly what they have done over the course of this season and uh, see whether they are the ones who are able to walk away with this trophy for the eighth time. Well, here it is. Uh, that's the game against St. Peter's. And a good body position there, getting over. And it's a basics, the forward pack, Riaz. And this was something that uh, maybe when you played in 1995 was not the hallmark of, uh, of Visipatana. They always had good backs. But now the forwards seem to be coming into the game much more. Uh, true. Uh, like, uh, like, the, uh, like the R days, uh, we didn't have uh, heavy forwards. But uh, I think uh, throughout the season, forwards have been really working hard. And they have been uh, a strength to our team. Uh, we, we are expecting quite a lot uh, with the three quarters. Uh, this match. Yes, and looking at uh, Charminda who just scored there and also Manil Karuberu, just a very young boy uh, already and uh, he maybe have maybe three years more to play in this uh, Isipatana side. So, it uh, looks like the young talent is really coming through for Isipatana as well. Uh, yeah, very much. We have quite a lot of young guys playing uh, even uh, in this team. Uh, Ruberu is one of them, uh, expecting a lot from them. And that's uh, Sachit Silva knocking over the uh, penalty that uh, gave uh, San Joseph Salid against Dhanbaraja. He's been a really important inclusion into your team, Dinuk. Yeah, uh, Sachit has uh, performed very well uh, this year, especially in the kicking area, consistent. And also even finishing, uh, he has ended up the highest scorer in the league. So he has brought in a new dimension into the San Joseph College uh, backline. I think he has scored about uh, 34 points, of which he scored maybe 24 in uh, that game. So uh, look to him to be outstanding today, but the forwards were the ones that really set the tone for your wins, isn't it, Dino? Yeah, I think unlike the uh, previous years, St. Joe's has a very balanced side this year. They are a good set of forwards and a very steady set of three quarters. So, I think uh, it should be a very interesting game today. Looking at Chatra Saniviratna, who just scored that try a little while earlier on in this highlight reel, uh, how big is he a player for you, uh, Dinuk, this, this evening? Chatura has been outstanding, especially in the knockouts. He has, he has taken the role of a leader in the, in the knockout and he has taken it upon himself to make sure that St. Joe's uh, goes through. And he'll be huge today. He, he'll, he'll have a very big role to play today. And uh, he's got a huge kicking game. That much is for, for sure. He's got about 60, 70 meters on that boot of his. But Isipatana have uh, probably the one player in the entire league who can counter that. Chamut Fernando has really been outstanding this season at fullback. Uh, Riaz, how do you see him coming into today's game? Uh, right throughout the uh, season, he has been playing really well. Uh, he had few hitches, but I, uh, I hope that he will uh, get the all these act together today. Uh, but overall, uh, the team uh, is uh, well prepared, I suppose, and then uh, uh, Chamud can uh, lead in, uh, in from the front. So, Sumudu Rankotke coming back uh, means probably Randy Silva will go back into the number 10 position. So, pretty much a full strength backline for you? Uh, yes, uh, I think we will. Uh, we, uh, with Ruberu, we are having a small problem with Ruberu. Uh, Randy will stay at uh, the number 12 position and then uh, Anjana will play as, in, as the standoff for today. And uh, Sumudu Rankotke coming back into the team, that must be a big boost for the young players. Yeah, definitely. He has been a good leader and uh, uh, it is a strength for us. And uh, how are you coping with that, uh, Dinuk? Uh, last time out, you would have expected Sumudu not to be playing. Uh, does this cause any butterflies in the stomach for the Joes? Uh, well, uh, not really. I mean, Isipatana is, uh, is a fantastic side, so we have to respect that. And uh, we, we have lost Samish Miranga yesterday uh, due to an injury. Uh, so we will not be at 100%, but I mean, the boys are ready, boys are focused, and they are prepared to uh, play this big final. Unsung hero for you all has been Gihan Pereira in the number 8 jersey, uh, Dinuk, and he's been uh, really working, uh, his work rate has been very high. How do you rate his performance and how do you think he'll play today? Uh, true Shanaka, uh, Gihan has, uh, in my opinion, has not played to his full potential. I think he, sh he should have a big game today and he has been saving it for the big day. Uh, Riaz, you're probably still billed as favourites given the historical uh, nature of Isipatana's performance in this uh, Milo President's Knockout Tournament. Uh, how do you feel that tag will be worn by this particular team? Uh, I think uh, they might, uh, uh, they would prefer to be the underdog today and they will concentrate at that level and then uh, look into the game. Uh, pretty much uh, that's what uh, we want to do, we want to keep our heads down and then uh, perform at the correct time. And uh, Dinuk, uh, how do you wear the tags of underdogs? 
Well, uh, it's it's a good way to go. Uh, certainly, Isipatana is a better side. I, I feel uh, on paper at least. So uh, we should we should be able to you know turn tables, and uh, it's uh, less pressure when you go in as underdogs. Absolutely. Let's see how both these teams made it to the finals. The road to the final is uh, coming up now. And here we see the uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and uh, the big final, which is coming up. Under lights here at the race course, your live on the Papre.com and Dalak TV and My TV as well. You can see there St. Joseph's beating Wesley, probably their toughest game, 43 points uh, to 29. That would have been a scary uh, game for you going into it, but coming out with a good win, uh, Dinuk. Yeah, uh, we had lost to Wesley in the league, and that was a very big game for us. So the boys put their heads down and uh, worked on their mistakes and got their act together. Dalmaraja winning against, uh, well, they got a walkover against Royal and that was a good win, 34 points to 12. And uh, do, do you have enough match practice, you think, coming into this game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're coming off the league uh, and uh, they, there is enough match practice. Uh, of course, we would have preferred if Royal also played. But uh, that was a decent game, the semi-finals. We are happy with what we have achieved. And a really close uh, one uh, for uh, St. Peter's as well. They managed to beat, uh, convincingly, they managed to beat uh, Trinity College. And then uh, we had Isipathana, a really close win against St. Anthony's and another really close win against St. Peter's. So they're used to coming through the tough ones, Riaz. Yeah, definitely. Those two games were really tough. And I think uh, our boys were tested at that level. So I think uh, that, that could uh, call the date. Will it be a third big test? Let's wait and see. Dinuk Diaz Vijayaratna and uh, Riyaz Sali, thanks very much for joining us. Let's cross over to Dinuk Baskaran and Paul Toya in the commentary box. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you very much, Shanaka. The crowd has uh, filled the stadium. Paul, you're saying this is the first time you've seen something like this at Race Coast. The stage is set. The trophy is out. Both teams have warmed up. They have gone in and they will be coming up in few more minutes and uh, just uh, we'll run through the teams before that Paul very important lineup coming up and the starting 15 of uh, here's the starting 15 of Isipathana College Vikash Vimadava, Nepal Atukorla and Danushka Madhushanka in that front row and then Anjula, Sandarwan and Gayanath will be uh, Anjula and Sandarwan at 4 and 5 Gayanath and Jayamana Gunaratna in the back 3 Devin Gunaratna that he has been, had, had a superb game Yes, there are some changes from what you've seen on the screen And then uh, moving on to the backs Harit Bandara has been an excellent player for Isipatana throughout Anjana Kulasekar has stepped up after Randy Silva moving to the 12 jersey owing to injury for for another player and here is uh, Sumudu Rankot get back at 13 with uh, uh, Randy Silva at 12 and then De Silva, Fernando and Chamin the water player has been Chamot Fernando for Isipatana College this Isipatana team knows to win yeah look that's a very strong Isipatana team and they came in near the halfback and also um, uh, Fernando and also uh, Rankotka if, he's, if we actually see him on the paddock he's on the list Here's the St. Joseph stream, the front row, Tehan Sanviratna, Sven Muller, what a play he has been. Thira Kasantush in the front row, Himesh Kavinda, Shehan Aranda in the second, Vihanga Pereira, Gihan Pereira and Tarindu Alvis will be at 6, 7 and 8. And then we have at 9 and 10 for St. Joseph's College, uh, we have uh, Russian Gunavardhan and Chatura Sanviratna, he'll be very key under lights today. Sean Akila moves to 12, Vinul Fernando comes into 13, Kavin that fifth at, uh, at the left wing and then Sachit Silva on the right and Gamunu Chetia moves to full back. So that's the St. Joseph's uh, 15 today. Yeah, look, and that's also a very strong back, uh, back division. Sven Muller as well, he's got to be mentioned. He's been a colossus in the front row for um, St. Joseph's as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes in today's game too. Yeah, it'll be excellent. Here are the replacements, very important. Praveen Tangaya, Hasita Vijay Sekara, Johan Akila, Nihan Pereira, John Ganegoda, Vishwa Pereira, Channa Ashoka, Santu Shargama, Imesh Disanayaka, Udesha Pereira for St. Joseph's, Danushka Pereira, Dilshan, Sachita Sarasinga, Ilusha Yasas, Janit Serasinga, Chamat Kalhara, Dilika Hetyarachi, Man Manula Ratnayaka, Sandhu Navishka, 
and Keshava Sabanayaka for his Ipatana College. Very important, the replacements. Uh, this is going to be an intense game played through the 80 minutes. It's going to be very important. Yeah, look, so the big boys, they won't be able to play the full 80 minutes. They'll, um, I'd expect some of the tight five will be changed around the 60 minute mark to bring on fresh legs. It's so important in today's game to be able to bring on players that are going to make an impact at about the 60 minute mark that can bring new impetus to your team, new impetus to your attack or defence. So that's what they'll be playing for today. The big game, the final of the 2017 Milo Knockouts Tournament. 25th year Milo is hosting this tournament and it's a beautiful uh, thing that you will, would love to take it back home to put it in the cup. Will it end up at uh, Dali Road or will it end up at uh, Havelock Park? That, that will be the question mark. Well, um, at Havelock Park, it sort of knows its way there. It's, it'll be the eighth time it visits there if it, if it does head back that way. Uh, Dali Road, it'll be the first time it heads down there. So it'll be exciting for both, uh, for both schools. For St. Joseph's though, I'll be, I'm just wondering if the, if the occasion's going to get them. It's their first visit here. Um, as you've to know, have been here 17 times. They've won it seven times. You know, that's knowing what to expect when you get here is a big, is a big thing. Uh, mentally, it's a, it's um, it's a big plus for your team if you've if you've been here before and you've experienced something like this. The crowd have come in numbers here at the race course. They've almost filled this. There's a huge St Joseph's flag up in the stadium, and then a huge lot of green shirts present as well. It's not like the black and red we saw at Eden Park today, but this green and blue here in Kalapu. And they're going to make a huge noise today and it's going to be great atmosphere. Yeah, look, the, the atmosphere here at the moment is starting to really crackle. Um, as the teams ran off, you heard a huge cheer for both teams as the, as the boys walked off. Um, as you had to know how to um, form the line across, across the park and they walked off with um, hands on shoulders as they, as they presented themselves to the crowd. The crowd gave them a lift as well, so they'll go back inside now. Um, the coaches will be having their last word, then the captains will be having their last word, and then the players will come out for this much anticipated final of the President's Trophy. Yeah, that'll be what everyone will be prepared for. They would have been preparing for this, this moment to keep themselves calm, as you said, to, to, to suck that pressure off you enjoy that moment and cherish this moment that you're here we are in the college crest you will you will not get to do this uh, anytime soon or never again for some yeah that's right as we can see some waves being flagged uh, some some flags being waved sorry um in the crowd the crowd is starting to stand up they know what's coming the players are just starting to make their way out of the changing rooms the anticipation starting to build Focus will be the key word in the next 10 to 15 minutes because they need to be focused on what's going to happen in the next 80 that will be the, in the ground. As you said, the small moments as we spoke before as well, very important. Yeah, look, the players will also want to make sure that they take this opportunity. Um, it's, a not, and it's not an opportunity that many, of the, many other teams, or no other teams have had this opportunity. As we see the captain um, of St. Joseph's leaders team out, the crowd's starting to stand up. There's flags being waved in the background, as you can see. Um, these are the only two teams that have got this opportunity to play in this final. And the boys know that they've got to take this opportunity with both hands. Play the game of their lives. This is a part of the team you saw on your screen. Mentally very strong. I've seen them out and out again. Every week they come. They are strong in their heads. They know what takes them to win. And they will give every ounce out there. So when we talk about being mentally strong, viewer, we talk about being able to execute your skills under extreme pressure. When you've got players running at you, or when you're running at pace, being able to pass, catch, uh, tackle, make decisions. When there's extreme pressure on you, that's mental toughness. And that's what Izzy Bartner have today. Does St. Joseph's have the same mental toughness? Um, St. Joseph's are going to be, they're lucky because they've got a, a coach in uh, Nilfa Ibrahim. He was here last year with Izzy Bartner, so he knows what it takes to win. He's going to bring all of his experience that he has and try and transfer it across his charges so that when they come out on the paddock, they can take, they can take the glory. Yeah, for some of them I spoke to before, some of the Josephians I spoke to before coming to this game, and they said they're going to give everything out because they have not, not 
not won this before. And the other part of it is that St. Joseph's have not, don't have that winning mentality. And a win today will give a huge boost for them, for them to perform and believe in themselves in big competitions like this. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the, uh, we spoke about it earlier that they've grown into the season and they started off a little bit slower. Um, but now they've really hit the ground running and, and this team's really come together and started to grow. In the last three weeks, you've seen them grow as a team. They beat Wesley, then they beat uh, Dharamaja, and now they've got the belief. You can see that Isipatana team, they are focused and then they're just uh, talking to themselves, cheering during themselves up. We'll go for the school songs and uh, we'll be back with live action. We take this opportunity to cordially invite our distinguished invitees to be introduced to the two teams and the match officials. The Honorable Minister of Education, Akila Viraj Karyavasam, our chief guest for the evening. The Secretary, Ministry of Education, Mr. Sunil Hetiarachi, our guest of honor. Vice President Beverages, Nestle Lanka, Mr. Norman Kannangara. Vice President Corporate Affairs, Nestle Lanka, Mr. Bandula Egodagi. President, Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association, Mr. B.A. Abheratna. Together with Rector, St. Joseph's College, Reverend Father Travis Gabriel, together with Principal Isipadana College, Mr. Premasiri Appa. Being introduced uh, to Isipadana, the captain uh, Sumudu Rankotke, coach Lasinta Di Costa, master in charge uh, Sumeda Premasiri, prefect of games Sanati Leperuma. They have been uh, awesome. 14 finals, 7 wins, 4 in a row as far as finals for the Greens. The referee today is uh, Irshad Kader. He'll be assisted by Dinka Peris and uh, Sarat Madugal from the touchlines. Fourth official, Madhava Vijayasari. Sub officials, Rex Peris and uh, Roshan Adams. Match commissioners, Damita Pereira and Gamini Sarachandra. CMO, Tony Amit. TMO, Anil Jasinga. Participating in a Milo President's Trophy final for the first time in Joseph's College, Captain Vinol Fernando, Coach Nelufa Ibrahim, Master in Charge, Prasanta Ranavira, Prefect of Games, Reverend Father Milan Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, it is always a great passion. It is always a moment uh, to ponder and to rally the school anthems of the two teams with uh, the two teams and uh, their legion of fans in attendance together with our distinguished invitees. We start off uh, with a great uh, occasion uh, for the evening. Under lights, it's such a big story. Please stand up for the Isipadana College Anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, St. Joseph's College Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, the rugby fans are so colorful. The venue is magnificent. And we would only wish that the spirit of the game would prevail from kickoff to the final whistle. We would see rugby at its best. We would like to wish St. Joseph's and Isipathana all the best on behalf of uh, Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association and uh, Nestle Milo. A very good evening and welcome to the racecourse grounds which is bathed in artificial light here on this wonderful location that is the Milo President's Trophy Knockout Tournament. It looks like it's going to be an outstanding game of rugby. Both teams up for it, the crowd up for it. The racecourse ground is packed. This man is going to be under a little bit of pressure today. Irshad Kader assisted by Dinka Piris, Sarath Madugal and Anil Jayasinghe is our TMO for this evening. How will he blow this? Will he let it go nice, fast and easy? Or will he be a stop start, um, stop start uh, referee this evening? We'll wait and find out over the course of the next 80 minutes. Joining me in the commentary box, Paul Toya and Dinuk Baskaran. Paul, St. Joseph's just in the huddle. Their first final ever. How is this occasion going to get to them? Well, let's hope firstly that they just enjoy, enjoy being here. Like it's such a great occasion. A full packed stadium. Um, it's a beautiful ground, a beautiful evening for rugby. They should firstly soak up the atmosphere. Now, the ball's just about to be kicked off. They need to start turning on and thinking about what they have to do at this moment. Brandon, I know he Back in the side, which is a huge boost for Isipathana College. The captain is back after being in crutches last week. That's the kind of player he is as Zarandi Silva kicks off nice and deep and uh, taken immediately by uh, St. Joseph's who uh, gather that restart nicely and leg drive all their way up to the 10 meter line. Rush in, Gunawadana, Chaturas and Iviratna puts in the little chip kick. They've read it well, beautifully taken there by Sachit Silva. Might have been interfered with in the air but referees said play on. And the penalty is coming now for the undercut so referee had spotted that it was a nice little chip ball. And if that uh, tactic keeps working, might be an interesting evening for Chamoth Fernando. Well, look, that's the experience of the coaching staff because um, they know that both teams will be playing with a lot of emotion the first couple of minutes, which means that if you're defending, you'll push a very strong, fast lineup in defence as uh, Sinaratne takes the ball well within striking distance. They're 15, maybe 16 metres out from the Isibadana try line. So we saw a lot of emotion as um, St. Joseph took the ball up for the first time. Uh, I thought Isibadana were very lucky to get away with not a yellow card in that position where the player got taken out in the air. Absolutely. Uh, might have been uh, a close call for the Isibadana player who came in and uh, took out uh, Sachit Silva. Well taken in the front of the line out by Nimesh Kavinda there. They tried to set up the rolling ball. And a falling Anjana cannot keep them all from going forward. Russia and Gunavadana. Here's Seniviratna now will go on his own. The big Josephian fly half taking this to the line. Gunavadana marshals his uh, second wave of runners. Here's Sven Muller. Lot expected from him today. Five meters out, St. Joseph's. 
Gunawadhana again goes to the open side. They're under the post. Doubling up, tripling up almost. The ball was out, says the referee, but the penalty is coming. And Dinuk, it's all St. Joseph's at the moment. It has all been. And that lovely start of Chaturas and Iviratan, putting that chip behind, making sure that giving an early statement for the Sipatana not to rush up. He, he, and Gamunu Chetia, perfect chase here, quickly taken by Chaturna Seniviratna. And he touches it down. Yes, the first try for St. Joseph's College. So he starts it and he finishes it off. Yeah, look, that was really slack there by Zipatana. Five meters from your own try line. You've got to switch on. Everything should be on high alert when that happens. But the first thing I notice about St. Joseph's attack is that when they're using their forwards, instead of just having eight around and having a pick and go, they've gone to a one off the ruck and they're about five, six meters off the ruck. So that's a change that they've used for this game especially. Wonderful uh, opportunism by uh, Chatra Saniviratna. He faked as if he was going to kick it to uh, the corner and go for the line out. And that's what Isipatana were expecting. But just took the short tap and backed his bulk to go over in the corner. And in the tackle, he did manage to power over for the try. So we're talking earlier on in the talk show about how important Chatra Saniviratna was going to be. And uh, you can see exactly how big he is for this uh, St. Joseph's College team. Dinuk, uh, big blow early on in a final. Yeah, big one. And uh, Isipatana will have to hit back and hit back soon if they have to come into this game. Here's Sachit Silva. Pushes off that uh, off the right post. Kick uh, not going in between the posts. So 5 nil is the lead. But Isipatana have the char character and the mental strength to come back in this, uh, in this finals. They have been here before and they know how. Here's the replay once again. Chaturas and Viradna just kept the ball down. Two tacklers on him and he touches down before he puts his uh, right foot across on to touch. Devin Gunaratna should have really done better there. And here's Seniratna again. We'll thump this one back a hefty distance. And you can look at the sort of uh, air he gets on the ball. A 40 meter gain without uh, breaking a sweat really. But with the first attacking line out for AC Patana College. Need to hit back and not allow that early try to deflate them, uh, Paul. Yeah, look, we've spoken about the belief that Izzy Batna have, and I don't think um, one try in, in the first four minutes is going to um, deflate them too much. They'll trust in their own systems. Here's an opportunity now for them to attack. That's a lovely ball over the top. And uh, they don't engage St. Joseph's, but Izzy Batna don't. Maul that one forward, so it's uh, well played there by both teams, aware technically of the rules as well. Referee Carter has let it go, and Harith Bandara now will look for Randy Silva in the number 12 jersey today. Here's uh, Charminder stepping in off the right foot. De Silva, rather, on the right wing. It's untidy, and St. Joseph's have fallen all over it and recovered the ball. Sachit Silva puts it over the top, and uh, Chamot Fernando has to chase this back. He has a little bit of support. But gets caught. That was a great chase by Silva. And now St. Joseph swarming all over the ball like the Hornets that they have claimed themselves to be. But the penalty comes and the referee says uh, not releasing Chamot Fernando in the tackle. So Sachit Silva undoes his very good work. And he's about to get a reprieve. It was a nice little heads up play by him. And you could see him. He, looks, he looked up. He looked over where the ruck was. He saw, saw that there was space in the backfield and he put the kick in. Unfortunately, he just didn't release the player. But... Um, St. Joseph's are right up for this, aren't they? They're, every single contact, they're coming out on top at the moment. You don't see that very often against Izzy Patana. Kulasekara managing to get play up to the 10-meter mark there. Lasinta Di Costa trying to catch the attention of uh, one of his players. He's done very well this season in his first season in charge. The eldest of the Costa brothers. If you're tweeting this final, this is where to do it. Milo Rugby is our hashtag. Four man line out for Isipatana. Overthrown to Anjana there. And uh, Gunawadana is the first man to the ball. Gihan Pereira fires an offload infield. Well taken by Sachit Silva. Gunawadana again. Here's uh, Sven Muller now. Otean Seniviratna that is just powering his way forward. And it's unfortunately left behind by Tarindu Di Alvis. And Isipatana will have a chance to uh, clear their lines again. 
So an unforced error, killing what was a very good passage of play. Yeah, St. Joseph's have been building up. They parked themselves in the opposition half, putting a lot of pressure on Isipatana. And after that shot, I just saw Lasinta Costa signaling to Anjana to play in that opposition territory, kick the ball out. Unfortunately, that line out didn't come good for Isipatana College. So, first crumb of the game. taken uh, seven and a half minutes for us to get to it which is a good sign Devin Gurunathna going off the back here's Randy Silva met uh, in a big tackle Bandara will look for the box kick and he does well to step back and put this uh, over the head of Gamunu Chetia who recovers well Chetia now Gamunu Chetia down the left flank it's cut them wide open and unfortunately for St. Joseph's, another knock-on blights what would have been a very promising attack. Gamunu Chetia, blistering pace from the back. Isn't it blistering? It was, he just stepped on the gas. He had a little, little side step and then stepped on the gas and streaked down that side. It looked like the space was actually continuing down that sideline, but he brought the ball back in. I thought he should have uh, drifted in a little bit, drawn the last defender and tried to, tried to set his players up going around down the outside. Isipatana trying to play too much rugby in their own half, not kicking that ball. First time uh, went into contact off that 8-9-10 uh, eight, eight, move and uh, Anjana not kicking it out. So, uh, might be a good option what Lasinta suggested to play in the opposition half. Isipatana will be, we'll see what they are up to this again. Here's Devin Gunaratna baking off the scrum. Randy Silva, he'll be doing a lot more carrying today than he usually does in his uh, number 10 position. So he played 13 last week and he's asked to play 12 this week. So a lot of positional shifting for him. But credit to the boy, he's uh, able to do it with a plum. That kick might have just gone a little bit too far. And Harith Bandara will watch it run all the way back over the deadline, which means the referee will bring it back to where it was kicked or give them an option of the 22 dropout. So Gamma Nuchethi at that time just putting a little bit too much weight on that ball. But Paul, he's shown that uh, Harith Bandara can't just kick and hope? Well, no, he can't kick and hope. He's got to put it into space. He's got to find some green grass. That's where he wants the ball to land. Um, there's a lot of it here that's a really big ground, so he should be able to find some sort of free ground. But uh, you know, if you're going to kick into the backfield, you've got to make sure you've got chases as well. And, and there they put a, a relatively good chase up, and that forced the kick to come back. Nilfa Ibrahim with uh, Dinesh Kumar on the right of your screen, the trainer, and Aranga Walpal, the forwards coach on uh, your left. They will be pretty tense in that dugout, trying to bring St. Joseph's their first ever knockout tournament trophy, first ever big rugby trophy, in fact, from a school that's better known for their cricket, Harit Bandar. Anjana Kulasekara puts the dummy in, but St. Joseph's uh, defense was up quickly. Bandara, quick ball again. Now Chamot Fernando. Fernando steps on the outside. Charmin, they needed to stay a little flatter to try and receive the offload, but now they've got a good ball. Here's Harith Bandara again, smashed in the tackle by Gregory. Thiraka Santosh, in fact. And another penalty coming. Yeah, Don't forget that you can be the 16th man today if you want to uh, give a call to 720-760-160 if you're a Josephian fan or 161 if you're an Isipatana fan. You can be heard on the uh, grounds today. Just give a missed call and uh, you will be joining the cheering stack which is placed all over the grounds today. Harit Bandar kicked a lot of ball in that semi-final against St. Peter's, put a lot of pressure on Diyad Fernando and the back three and that's where Isipatana started to dominate that game in the semi-final. Here, he's trying to play from his own half, trying to give his backs to run uh, a bit too far from where he should do. I think uh, Isipatana are a bit emotionally challenged here. They'll, they need to settle down and come back soon. Overthrown again. And Anjan Kulasekara has uh, had a lot of work to do today, the young fly half. But he's uh, been up to the task as well. Managing to keep that ball in hand. Here's Bandara. Sniping around the fringes. Gunaratna with a nice half-backs pass. Ron Kotke trying not to do too much. Samuel Fernando to De Silva. Brought down in a desperate cover tackle from the Josephian defense. A 
And it looks like the ball has been turned over through a knock-on from uh, Isipathana. And St. Joseph's will be, for the first time, defending in their 22. And you can trust that this ball will go a long way back. And uh, I think the referee has ruled that that's sufficient advantage. Sumudran Kotke holding his head and this Josephian bench looks on. Some of them biting their fingernails. It's tense stuff already, Paul. It is tense stuff out there. And I, I just had a look at the um, Izzy Patna defensive line. It was very narrow there as the ball was kept back, went back to St. Joseph's. So they've got to make sure that they uh, keep an eye on that and keep their width. Otherwise, they might get burnt on the outside. Anjanad as well this time. It's transferred to the back, so referee should probably have uh, not let that one go on. But uh, here we go now. Isipatana is still holding the ball. Chamot Fernando stays strong in the tackle. Manages to lay the ball back nicely. And uh, the Josephian counter ruck is to no real avail there. As the Charmin the came through and uh, set up a second phase. Real physical stuff here. From the Josephians, they're hitting hard in the tackle. Now some space on the outside. Here's Anjana. And the penalty is coming for Isipathana. It was offside. So the Josephian defensive line a little too eager. So I'm noticing that uh, Bandara, every time he picks the ball up, the nine for uh, Isipathana, he has a little look. He's gotten through the just around the edges of the ruck. He's gotten through twice. And there are holes there, so they'll, St. Joseph's will have to make sure that they close up those holes because if they leave the space for Bandara, he's going to find it and he's going to go through and he'll make you pay. Penalties considered three St. Joseph's and two for Isipatana. Interesting call, Isipatana going for the touch. Do they have the kickers to kick from 40 is a question mark, but they did during the warm-ups with Riza Mubarak right behind them. They've called it for three. It will be interesting to see if they can make it five or seven. Lots of green jerseys in the crowd. The grass is green. The Jerseys are green and can these uh, blue and white stripes hold sway today? That's the uh, question that will be answered in uh, just over 65 minutes. Adhakorala, nice throw into Anjana. And here's the mall which gathers a little bit of momentum and stops quickly in the face of this heavy Josephian pack. Still going once, says the referee. And Bandara now must use it. Here's Kulasekara, takes it to the line. Smashed in the tackle. Here's some space for Ankut Gay. Charmin the juggle. Charmin has a bit of space on the outside. Throws the ball infield and uh, eventually manages to get a line out. Probably should have cut back in there, Paul. Oh, look. It's, um, six, of, six one way, half a dozen the other. You know, um, as, a, as a winger, you normally try and back yourself on the outside. You look at the corner post, you go for it, you hope that your fin can be there, you hope you have enough pace. And maybe a little step or something like that. He didn't manage to get across and score the try. But you've got to have a go. Well, have a go he did. And he managed to just throw the ball inside. That St. Joseph's a force to kick it out. Man on the ground is uh, Gamunu Chethia. St. Joseph's will be hoping very much that he gets up quickly. Which he does. Here's uh, the good drift defense from Chethia. Manages to keep the man on the outside. So he uses the touchline. It's good technique there. Looked like there might have been a little knock on there that just the commentary box saw. Yeah, very good technique from uh, Gamun Chetia, as you said. Israel Dag, save one for the All Blacks today. Here is uh, Isipatana College going for that rolling mall once again. Bilal Hassan has put a lot of authority in there. Devin Gunaratna at the back. No way going forward. Yes, Gunaratna scores and scores the first try for Isipatana College. Five all with a big kick to come. 16 points on the board. Isipatana have settled and scored first. Yeah, look what a barnstorming run off the back of that well set up driving mall. Um, it was interesting how um, St. Joseph's didn't actually engage to start off with. They let them set the mall and then they come into a gauge. Strange. Oh, I would have thought that you'd either try and uh, engage straight away and take the pillars out or you try and sack them straight away. But here, look. As you see, the mall gets set up and then they engage. They try to hold them there. They need to have one forward who needs to stand off. And we saw the halfback calling for someone to come in. It was a bit too late. Too much power there for the number eight. Well, he's learned a few things from his brother, that's for sure. 
Amaka Gunaratna, who uh, wore the green jersey not too long ago. Devin Gunaratna smashing through just like uh, his brother would have been proud of. They're coming off the back of that mall, not really trying to rumble it all the way, Paul, which took the Josephian defence by surprise. Yeah, look, they didn't quite set that defence up. And we just spoke about that, um, the, the ruck defence, and just on the fringes, how Bandata was looking at it. There we saw a, a perfect case where they just leave a little hole there open. Yeah, a couple of times they went on contesting, not contesting the mall. Here's Gamunu Chaitya putting that away off that right post, no distance as well. It's deadlock at 5 all at the big final here at Race Coast. Very difficult ground to kick in. The wind uh, swirls arbitrarily here. Never really know which way it's coming from because there's so many tall buildings on every side. So if you're not if you've not played here regularly, if you haven't kicked here regularly, it can be a bit of a difficult ask. But Devin Gunaratna scored the first try in the semi-final as well, and now he scored the first try in the final. He'll be hoping the result at the end is the same as well. Chatra Seniratna's uh, mistake means that they will come back for a centre scrum. Yeah, so there it's, it's all starting to fall apart there for St Joseph. So the, they, they began with great gusto and they played with a lot of emotion to start off with and you saw that they were winning the, the contact early on. We've now gotten to the 18 minute mark and now things are evened up. Now the mental pressure is just starting to build and uh, that's the first little wobble that we've seen from St Joseph's. That closed skill mistake here where he didn't kick to 10. Yeah, that, that's, that's the point there where St. Joseph's will be tested today, isn't it? The mental strength because they're here for the first time and Nisipatana know what it takes to win. And this bunch of boys have had two close games in the quarters and semis, three Nisipatana scrums, and uh, they have not lost anything of their own feet. Here's Gunaratna once again going off with Harit Bandara and a knock forward from uh, Silva. So a good move, had men on the outside as well, unfortunately. Ball not sticking in hand for Nisipatana College. Look, I've, I've had a look at the defences of both teams and they're very narrow. The field's very wide. A little Bowden Barrett kick over out to, the, out to the wing or something like that might take, up, take advantage of that space on the outside. So that's an area that I've seen. There's a few holes. Here we see a replay of that move where uh, the ball went to ground from Izzy Bartano, which is a shame because when you do, it, when you do a set, set piece play like that, Every player has to be on. Every player has to expect to receive the ball there and look like there that uh, Randy Silva didn't expect to receive that one. Here's Russian Gunavardana to feed the ball into the scrum. Right at the back stays. And comes out to Chatura Senviratna. Shows and gives a lovely ball to Gamunu Chetia. Centre field nicely read by Silva. Takes him down. And a penalty against the runner play. Holding on says the referee. Be an interesting replay to see there. Well, the referee there saw something that we didn't because uh, it looked like the ball was there lying out in the open. So um, it's, a, it's something that I've noticed here about referees in Sri Lanka. They don't actually let the player get cleaned out. So generally in world rugby, um, players need to survive the clean out of the players that are coming to clean that ruck out. Um, here it looks like that as soon as you get your hands on the ball, you don't actually need to survive the clean-out. You just have to show the referee that you've got your hands on the ball. And here we see a replay of it. And then... Uh, see the player going to ground here. Now it's a tackle. Second player in. Now he didn't survive the clean-out. Harit Bandara stepping into the lineup there and trying a quick ploy there. Nilifa Ibrahim looking a little nervous there. Smiles uh, before the whistle and after the whistle, but not during. Look, you saw the All Blacks score a try, a famous try that uh, Richie McCaw scored, where he played at halfback and stepped into the line, and he got away with it that time. Bandara didn't get away with it this time. What do you, why do you think he didn't, Paul? Not really sure what the referee was uh, calling there. Oh, why didn't he get away here? Well, he's not, he's not part of the line-out. And uh, the line-out hasn't finished, and he's come in and joined the line-out from halfback. Knock on, says the referee. And don't forget the World Cup of Tennis is on, 17th to 22nd July. You can follow it all. 
on the papare.com another untidy bit of play there resulting in a knock forward yeah look the set pieces Henry here we see a replay of the set piece see Izzy Budnick just getting taking their cue off uh, off the St Joseph's jumper as the St Joseph's jumper just came in as he approached he gave a little skip and that meant that he was going to jump up and that's enough for the uh, Izzy Budnick jumper to say right get me up boys and he got up in time disrupted the jump but didn't take it cleanly Here's a scrum for the big Josephian pack to get some forward momentum. Gihan Pereira off the back, 8 9 14. Committing several players uh, to that rock, but here's uh, Sven Muller showing he doesn't need any support. Barreling his way for about five meters. And here they go again. This is what works so nicely for them uh, against Dharmaraja. The pick and go, but hacked through by Atako Rala the hooker and here's Tehan Seniratna the big prop youngster has uh, really done well this season but uh, shoved back in the tackle by an excellent uh, Randy Silva fly half on uh, prop and you'd expect the prop to win that battle but Silva managed to shove him backwards showing and going is Chatura Seniratna stepping through the defense once again needed to give it after he broke the first line Well picked up uh, off his boot laces by Thierry Kasantush, the other front row. And here's Vinul Fernando, the skipper, joining the line. Vinul Fernando with real pace, dragged down by Kulasekara. Kulasekara didn't roll away, and uh, the referee will come back for the penalty, surely. Actually, I thought he should have blown it up a little bit earlier than that. It hit his leg, and once it hits, it hits the referee, that's deemed to have hit a had an object that's outside the field of play and uh, he normally blows it up straight away. St. Joseph's using uh, the forwards in front in contact, going into contact and they're using the forwards properly, just uh, giving the ball out, going for two hits and then Chaturas and Viratna trying to run through that and in the meantime, Ishipatana awarded a scrum. Well, that's a huge mistake, isn't it? Five meters out, you get a penalty, and then you don't take the tap properly. Referee card a very eagle-eyed on that one, and that's a kind of under-13 error that you don't want your key player making. Still a chance for this uh, forward pack to uh, impose itself. Gunaratna binding down in the number one channel goes off the back and has plenty of space. Nice offload to uh, Silva, and now they've got some space. Good run there by Jayamana. And a massive kick. Gamunu Chetia takes it beautifully, or Chan Sachit Silva rather takes it excellently running backwards. Chamot Fernando now, first chance to stretch his legs. Lovely little offload to uh, Vikash Vimadava, the prop. Charminder forced to kick and it's a good one from the winger found himself in an unlikely position it's not a bad kick and as you can see there by the flag of the uh, linesman or the referee's assistant there's a little bit of wind blowing into the faces of uh, Izzy Bartana so um, that kick was a very intelligent kick heading into the wind I thought out the other side they probably could have run that because it looked like they had numbers and, and space they had uh, three or four on on one St. Joseph's winning two of their own lineups have lost one Isipatan trying to put pressure in front but not getting it here's Chaturas and Viratna now will put that high ball under lights which will test these youngsters for the first time Chamod Fernando gets it one but uh, a high tackle says the referee The ball is out for Isipatana College. Comes off the back door. Here's Anjana. Gives it out wide to the skipper, Sumudu. A lovely inside ball. And the advantage is over for Isipatana College and a knock forward for St. Joseph's. Looked like a nice spot tackle there by the prop that was getting across there that made the tackle on uh, a couple of Isipatana players that were flooding through. 
Yes, uh, the initial penalty advantage was for the tackle by Vinul Fernando on Chamut Fernando. Didn't uh, make too much of an attempt to wrap his arms, flew at uh, the young fullback, but referee deeming that one was high. But you could see that Sumudu Rankotke is playing at about 50%. Normally, he would probably have put his ears back a little earlier. But uh, you can see that he's really not comfortable with that uh, injury. Yeah, you can see in, de in his defensive line, um, you see he takes about a metre little head start in front of uh, Ryan, Randy Silva uh, so that he can, he can get up a little bit earlier. Rashan Gunawadana, Seni Ratna with a huge thump. Probably a little too far for his chasers. Chamot Fernando has no trouble marking this one. And he'll take his time now. So that ball's almost going above the, the line of the lights. You know, if, if, if it goes out of the line of the lights, it goes up into the dark, you don't see anything, and then you just have this thing that starts like a bomb falling from the sky at a great rate of knots. As you said, uh, Sumudran Kodgi is not 100% fit, but he's here as a leader in the team, and also Chamod Fernando is limping as well. You know, Shanaka, how much this Isipatana team has been hit with injuries over the past three weeks and they've managed to come to this big occasion. And the l next 60, next uh, 50 minutes, they'll, give, they'll be giving their hearts out. That's the mentality these green, green shirts have. Yes, they're definitely the walking wounded here. And uh, Dinesh Kumaro will have to go back and have a bit of a session uh, and see exactly what happened as the referee very correctly calls that a truck and trailer or an accidental offside there because they transferred the ball to the back of the mall before there was an engagement so referee Carter getting that spot on so really young uh, locks or anyone any jumpers that are watching this game in those situations you need to make sure that the opposition are coming in and uh, making contact with you before you transfer the ball back you just got to keep your eyes open and, and just have a little look to make sure that um, that a mall's being formed before you pass the ball backwards Good presence of mind from Isipatana as well in defence there. Jayamana on the near side, or rather it's Gayanath on the rear, near side. Kulasekara onto the right boot. That might have gone a little bit too far. In fact, no, it's right on the money. Sachit Silva manages to stand strong in the tackle. Here's Gamunu Chethi and now will uh, look to run in the broken field. Puts his winger away. The cover is good, but it's very, very high. And I'll be surprised if Chamot Fernando stays on the field after that one. Kavinda got absolutely clattered. You just have to see whether he was falling into the tackle or not. He did get clattered. I don't, we'll have to wait and see what the initial contact was. If the initial contact was to the head, then there should be a... Uh, a card will come but uh, it looked like he sort of bent down into that tackle physio Basit on the field immediately he looks a little groggy don't think there was any real malicious intent from Chamot Fernando but these are the areas where the referee has to intervene so he did look a little bit groggy you can see him going into the pocket he's got a yellow card with the 29th minute Almost the 30th minute, so he won't get back on. He might get back on for one more minute in the in this half. But now, Izzy Button are going to play with 14 men. And it looks like uh, St. Joseph's will have to make a change as well. At least there'll be an HIA assessment. There should be. If, if there's not, there's, uh, there's something going on wrong because he looks very groggy and he needs to be assessed. Yeah, he uh, carving the really looks like he needs to go off and be assessed or but maybe he was just playing maybe he was just acting acting so that uh the tackle might come and as we have a look at the replay you can see the height is up around the neck isn't it it's almost like a necktie here's the line out through the hands of the St. Joseph second row and Harit Bandare just putting this behind and we tested once again and he knocks the ball forward. Carving the that kid still playing on his mind, maybe just running back. Here's Chamud Fernando. 
testing time for Isipatna Shanaka. This is where Chatura Seniviratna can come into the game. No one to counter attack. Chamoth Fernando taken out for the next 10. Chatura Fernando's kicks will be more effective from now on. There are men down, but there might as well be five men down, isn't it? The way that Chamoth Fernando has been playing this season. But this is where good leadership from uh, Gunaratna at the back of the scrum will uh, dictate. They need to keep this ball with the forwards. They need to wear down the clock on the sin bin. And St. Joseph's will be desperate to get their hands on the ball and unleash that big boot of uh, Chatra Saniviratna and the big chase that they've got in their wingers. Here's Gunaratna straightening. Harit Bandar. Here's uh, Vikas Vimadava breaking a few tackles. The big prop forward. It looks like it's been nicely turned over by St. Joseph's. But the counter ruck is good. They come through and attack the scrum half. And Kulasekara has uh, no options at the back of the scrum. At the back of the ruck rather. And a nice little grubber from Randy Silva. Will result in uh, the referee saying there's no advantage. Valpula and Ibrahim there. Looking a little tense. It's just five all on the scoreboard, so there's nothing to be really be tense about. But it has been a real chess game, isn't it? It has been a chess game, and now uh, it looks like one of the key pieces for Isibatna have been taken off. But now they have control of the ball; they have control of the game. So sometimes, what happens when you have a player taken off, the team lifts, and instead of playing like you've got 14 players. Teams sometimes end up looking like they've got 16 players on the paddock. And maybe that's what's going to happen with Izzy Batana. Maybe this is the shot in the arm they needed because uh, their injured players aren't really making, uh, making, closing the gap on, on where they should be and where they want to be. Manil Karuberu and uh, Chamud Fernanda have been doing all the kicking duties for Izzy Batana all these days. But yes, Anjana, young Anjana Kulasekara. Puts off that right post, a hesitant decision coming off that bench, whether to go for that three or not. In the end, they decided to go for that three, and Anjana has been not kicking all season, and he misses the first one. Look, taking a three while you've got a man off the field, uh, it's a great advantage. Psychologically, it says to the other team, we can score against you, and you've only, we've only got 14 men. Yes, it was a good call to go for that uh, three points. Kulasekara, as he gets more experience we'll realize that he can take a little bit more time over that as Randy Silva now looks to step into his fullback shoes lovely run from uh, him ghosting through a couple of gaps and here's uh, Vikas Vimadav fire in his eyes straight through the gap goes Harit Bandara gets the offload away keeping the Isipatana keeping the St. Joseph's defense guessing here's uh, Angela does really well, stepped like a back there, and now Isipatana in a green wave. Kulasekara gives it to Devin Gunaratna, Gunaratna barging through into Chatura Seniviratna's tackle. Here's a good quick ball. Beautiful tackle there, read it excellently. And Charminder fighting his way to the ground. Isipatana still have it after St. Joseph broke that move down in midfield. Here's Vikas Vimadav again held up in the tackle and this would be a maul. And this is great defence from St. Joseph's if they do get the ball back. And they do. So that's outstanding defence. Shooting up outside the defensive line. That tackle saved a certain try for Isipatana. We'll try and show you who it was again. But uh, that was good defensive work. I think it was the captain Fernando who got up there and made that tackle. It was a great spot tackle and it's what, what was needed. But St. Joseph's are getting caught out around the ruck, around the edges of the ruck. They need to make sure that their defence is, is much stronger at one and two. One and two especially at, at ruck defence. This is where Isipatana will be tested. They don't have Chamut Fernando at the back. And there is no full back now. They are deciding for whom to send at the back. Both wingers coming on the sides. None at the centre. Chatura Senviratna will be watching that. I'm actually surprised they put full complement on the scrum. I think the numbers do have to be even in the scrum at this uh, age group, Paul. 
but they've got a few players back and Randy Silva now has uh, done really well to go back and collect that and now De Silva it's an elusive runner breaks three tackles there Premadasa put on his back by uh, Gehan Pereira outstanding tackle from him and the penalty is coming and the referee will have a word with the Josephians as there have been a few penalties that they've given away in defense. A yellow card for Gihan Pereira. So it evens the numbers on the park. 14 all. Here. Here's the replay once again. not rolling away that's why he gives the penalty for not rolling away first time I've seen him do that and uh, he gets a yellow card it's pretty harsh to say the least but now is he about to know less than 10 meters away from the try line 14 men each well it might have even been for the tip tackle Kulasekara <laughs> Randy Silva coming in on a nice angle but uh, can't hold the ball and swarming up in defense again is uh, Sachit Silva Chatra Seniratna ball in both hands now there's some space Vinul Fernando the skipper tries to stand up the defender but Jamin that does excellently and there's been an off forward and uh, the man in the number 11 jersey now Jamin the did an excellent job in defense there on Vinul Fernando. Watch him trying to stand him up here. Vinul runs straight into him, then steps outside. Elliot Daly did that a little while uh, earlier today to Anton Leonard Brown, but Charminder was better in defense than Leonard Brown was. He would, would so love to Steve, listen. Steve Hansen might be after his number. And he, Charminder would love to hear that comment over and over again. <laughs> It was great defence though. It looked like they had, they were shorter numbers there, and uh, as we see, scrums won by Zibatna, uh, seven and lost none. Zibatna managed to spend about good six to seven minutes without Chamud Fernando, without doing any damage on the opposition half. Got a penalty, tried kicking it. Now it's St. Joseph's turn again. In that next five, after Chamud Fernando comes back, how they will react with 14. Hard working Sudhir Agayanath on the near side of the scrum. Gunaratna has been doing plenty of work breaking from the back. Randy Silva now trying to leg drive his way through the tackle. Gets past the gain line and uh, waits for his scrum half to put this raking kick into the 22. It's nicely weighted. And Sachit Silva with his brand new haircut. Thumps is back in field and Harit Bandar looks like he may have lost it in the lights and wanted it to go out for a line out throw for his own team rather than uh, trying and going into an error. Charmer VFX tweeting Milo Rugby always for the underdogs he says so uh, get tweeting on this Milo President's Trophy final don't forget to give calls to your respective numbers and become the 16th man this wonderful feature trotted out by Milo and uh, that looked like it might have been a little dicey as well that uh, there wasn't an engagement before Isipatana started moving forward and Harit Bandara now putting the ball over the top for Sachit Silva to chase back Gamunu Chetia Chetia opting to run it out and uh, Wrong footing Randy Silva. Reshan Gunawadana, Russian Gunawadana rather. His opposite number Bandara is back. Lovely little bit of stepping by Bandara straight through the gap he goes. Lovely offload. 
Can he get the ball away? Sudhir Aganath. Excellent pick up by Atukoral. But Chatur Seniviratna turns his ball over like a flank forward. Brilliant defensive work. And another certain try save by some outstanding defense by St. Joseph's. And here's an opportunity now for Gamanu Chetia to go the other way. Chetia stepping. Harit Bandara gets back. The clean out is good as well. And it looked for all money that uh, De Silva came in from the side there. And that might have been a try scoring opportunity. Well, there's no might about it. Um, it definitely was a try scoring opportunity. Um, Chetia just ran away from his support then. His support was all on the left hand side, on the, the far side as you see it, viewers. Um, there were two players on the other side, but he kept on looking inside. What he needed to do was just slow his feet until the support came. And then he one pass, maybe two passes, and they would have been in, in the corner. Chamot Fernando up and ready to come into the field. Here's the replay once again. Gamunu Chetia, good 50 meter run. And then. Shipatana players coming on the side, says uh, referee Irshad Kada. Big call from uh, St. Joseph's to go into a half time with the lead. Chaturas and Viratna taking a 52 meter penalty with six penalties conceded by St. Joseph's. Five by Sipatana. Kicking with the wind. Uh, Chaturas and Viratna has a big boot on him, as we know. And it's true. What a kick! An excellent kick by Chaturas and Viratna to go into half time. Eight points to five. And the Joe's crowd are up in the stands brilliant kick isn't it Paul what a magnificent kick uh, right on the halfway line it must have been over what are we, 55 meters as the crow flies and uh, to be able to go into the into the changing rooms or go into half time with that kick behind you you know that things are going your way if you've only got 14 players on the field and you can still score points from um, halfway. The Josephians very happy in the crowd now. These are, the, these are the points that can come into play in a big final. These three points can be very crucial. 52 meter kick and Chatura Seniviratna. And that will put a lot of pressure on Isipatana as well not to concede penalties in that 50 meter zone. And they know Chaturas and Viratna can kick those two. Yeah, look, there's that, but there's a psychological boost that um, you get from scoring just before half time. Um, it says that you finish the half stronger, as you can see there, there's a scoreboard, eight points to five. And you've just snuck ahead on the back of a fantastic kick for you in number 10. Um, now, we know that Sinaratna, he's up for this game, and all his teammates will know that he's up for this game. Now he'll be able to ask from his teammates to give more as well. Eight points to five, that's how the halftime has finished here at uh, a race course. As you can see on the near side, St. Joseph's huddled in two forwards and backs. And uh, Isi Patna have gone into the changing room. And uh, here's the highlights of the first half. Uh, Paul, Chatura Seniviratna, good presence of mind, took a quick tap and dotted the ball down. Yeah, look, they'll have to be alert to that in the second half because uh, they've done that a couple of times, St. Joe's. And here's Daisy Patana try. Devin Gunaratna breaking off that mall and then uh, just powering his way through. Yeah, it's a great number eight try. And as we spoke already, it is, his brother will be very happy about that. That's the sort of thing that he does. That's uh, Chumwood Fernando getting a yellow card for that high contact see a player staying down until the referee gives the contact and then all of a sudden he makes a miraculous recovery and comes back up. And this is Gamun Chetia's run. So this is where I said that he has all the support was on the outside, it was to the left. It was very well done by Zipatana. They just shepherded him away from his support and he went back into contact. Although it didn't matter, they end up getting a penalty and they, they kicked the points from this position but um, they could have made a it could have been so much more. It could have been a seven-point gap. 
And there's that booming boot. Kicks like a mule. 52 metres. I'd say that's more 55 metres on the fly. Um, knocks over. That's three points and they go on to the break. Eight points to five. Eight points to five. That That's what uh, has happened here at the race course grounds. And... Uh, and also talking about that first half, Chamod Fernando of that yellow card, Paul, Isipal Thana have managed to hold on to that 10 minute, just conceding three points. They played a lot of rugby in, that, in the in the St. Joseph's uh, half. They did play a lot of rugby. They played some smart rugby. And they only conceded points when St. Joseph's went down to 14 men. So it was even. So they held them out when they, they when uh, St. Joseph's had a numerical advantage. Um, they played very well. Now they're going to have the wind. Let's join Shana Kamara Singh who is down. It's half time here at the Milo President Trophy Knockout Tournament. Eight points to five, a spectacular 52 meter kick by Chatra Saniwaratna to take the lead for St. Joseph's just at the stroke of half time. But this is an electrifying atmosphere here at the race course. We are under lights on a wonderful day to play rugby. And joining us, senior brand manager of Milo, Mr. Mohamed Ali, to tell us about uh, Milo's 25 year unmatched support with rugby and just sports in Sri Lanka. Can you tell us a little bit about Milo's passion for sports here, Ali? Part of the brand is to nourish champions. So our grassroots sports sponsorship program is very much in line with that. So here we define we get into sports, not simply uh, talk of the World Cup or the Olympics as such. Uh, how we define success at Milo is about conquering the one day at a time instead of falling down and getting back up. It's about going that extra mile. So I think it's about sportsmanship and also uh, with a view of uh, inculcating well-rounded personalities of the country. So that's that's the whole objective behind it. Uh, yes, uh, we marked 25 years uh, with the rugby, so it has been a memorable partnership with the school's Rugby Football Association, uh, along with uh, coaches, teachers in charge, um, as well as the players themselves. Uh, so it has been a memorable partnership, it has been fantastic to celebrate 25 years. Uh, in view of the celebrations, we also partnered with the past players. Uh, we just uh, concluded the Regents Rugby Show Dan. In uh, As a prelude to that, we also embarked on a campaign uh, with uh, the captains themselves, where they recall their memories of their game. Uh, back in the day, uh, how they played the game and uh, uh, the demonstration of team spirit, they recall that, so that's something uh, we want to inculcate uh, under the uh, team, uh, team, team makes me, so that uh, made it strong in the digital media as well as TV and uh, radio, so that was one element to it, uh, and uh, also today was the Regents Rugby Showdown, so in essence what it means is that uh, these gentlemen who played the Regents Rugby Showdown today represent uh, their teams, it's not the individual brilliance that was demonstrated here today, it was that they represented their team, so they made through the league, uh, booked a place in the finals of uh, the league and then qualified uh, into the knockouts and then of course the ultimate went on to win the this prestigious trophy and today they represent their teams and really demonstrated what team spirit and what, what gentlemen they have gone on to become in life as well. Most of them are uh, very successful in the individual right. Yeah, it was great to see the Milo Whites winning this first ever Legends game and you all have got several innovations today in uh, this uh, this evening's rugby match and we've got the Legends game, we've got the 16th man as well where all you fans at home can call the respective numbers and get be, be part of the cheering squad for your teams as well. So Milo coming up with a lot of innovations this evening, you must be very happy to see this wonderful crowd. Exactly, we couldn't have asked anything for better to celebrate 25 years, it's absolutely electrifying atmosphere here. Yes, you've been touched on the 16th man concept, uh, yes. To see the fans come in their number, uh, which also has been uh, good thus far. Uh, in fact, uh, fans are the indispensable part of the game. Uh, they are the live wire of the sport uh, with their cheers and shouts and cries beyond the line. Uh, in fact, uh, and we know it's been popular with the green machine. The 16th man has always been a big force behind the Swadana team. So we have launched this concept. You know, the team typically has 15 men. Uh, this time around, we, we introduced the 16 man concept where the fans, wherever they may be, they can really engage with the sport. Rather than being not a big passive audience. Yes, if you're in the ground, you can really scream and shout out and express your energy. But what if you're watching the uh, match back at home or if you're another part of the world? You simply have to give a missed call to the two numbers. I think we've uh, given enough uh, hype during the coverage itself, so the numbers are people are well aware. I think uh, the initiative has been well received. I think the numbers are a good uh, 9,000 plus uh, old schools. I think uh, as it is, his father is leading with the cheer. So it was the Saints. 
uh, can join on and cheer them and uh, really push their teams past the dry line. Well, thanks very much, Charlie, for joining us. It's been a wonderful support from uh, Milo for this rugby uh, tournament, and we're seeing an outstanding evening's rugby here. We're back for the next 40 minutes. Uh, St. Joseph's in the lead by a mere three points. Will they go on to win their first trophy ever, or will it be eighth time for Isipatana? We'll find out in just about 40 minutes. Back to the commentary box. You can follow over there. Thank you, Shanika. That was uh, an interview with uh, Milo. The sponsors for this tournament. With live pictures coming to you on the popplay.com and Dialog Channel 1. Great scenes here at uh, Racecourse. It has been an excellent match so far. Eight points to five, as you can see. The huddle at the left on your screen. St. Joseph's just talking to each other, trying to stay close with each other. So emotional it has become. And in tears, some of them. Nilufa Ibrahim just looking over Anuranga Valpolo doing all the talking with his senior men there and you can see them everyone in tears Chatura Seniviratna at the back and how much they'll be mentally charged for the next 40 will be very interesting Isipatana College walk on as well to the second half Nilufa Ibrahim having the final words, calming the boys down. Here's Isipatana College, three points down in the game. They're focused. That's our photographer, the Papri.com photographer, Samira. Feels a bit shy, I guess. Devin Gunaratna for Isipatana College. He's been an instrumental player so far. Irshad Kader was had a decent first half and uh, we'll be hoping to have a better in the second. Chatura Viratna to uh, start proceedings. Gihan Pereira had been caught in the park just before his uh, 10 minutes on the bin finishes. He's been sent back to the naughty chair as Chamud Fernando comes back for the full 15 for Isipatana College. Second half, final 40, three minutes, the diff three, three points, the difference, just a penalty and a big one. Seniratna getting the second half underway. Everything to play for here for both these teams. St. Joseph's a whisker in front in their quest to win their first ever trophy. Isipatana trying to be eight-time champions of this tournament. And the referee card is saying that uh, the Josephians are guilty of indiscipline again. They've let themselves down a little bit with the amount of penalties they've conceded, Paul. Yeah, look, that's right. They have let themselves down a little bit. In, in these situations, what they really need to do is recognise that they're not going to get the ball back just reset the line and that's what they needed to do there but they didn't and instead now they're going to be back an extra 20 meters but the kick doesn't find touch so they have an opportunity now to bring the ball back with some interest here's carving the running back he looks perfectly fine after that high tackle and the break at half time Rashan Gunavadana gives it to skipper Vinul here's Chetia on the outside Runs past one, looking for the support. Gets in the form of Tehan Saniviratna, who's busting his way through to the 40 meter mark. Rashan looking for options now. Muller taking the ball into contact. Here's Rashan once again. Now goes out wide to Chatura Saniviratna, who has not looked to pass so far in this game. Takes the line. Rashan once again to Swain Muller, very hard working hooker for St. Joseph's, has had a great season so far. This Chetia once again gives it to his keeper on the outside, just steps off in. It's uh, Silva, 5 meter line, it's St. Joseph's, 
Here's Gunavadana once again to Gyamunuchetia, trying to be close to the ruck. Gives a nice pass off to uh, Sean Akila. And Sean Akila scores as he. It's, not, it's a knock forward. So St. Joseph's putting in a lot of pressure. I like what they did down this near side and uh, close to the touch. They had four players within five metres. And that, just that little tram line of five metres and they made, made uh, excellent use of that limited real estate there. And just see the, uh, the ball getting knocked loose in the contact there. And unfortunate. Yes, it was uh, a knock forward with the line at his mercy. Fernando quickly grabbing onto the ball for dear life. You can see a 15 kilo advantage for the Josephians in the pack weights. And most of that advantage would be in the front row. Gunaratna off the back. Offloads a short pass to Randy Silva who will calmly put this out. Good exit from under their posts for Isipatana, but they'll still have to face this defensive line out now. Yeah, look, the thing is that if St. Joseph's were in the same position, you'd look at uh, getting the ball back to Senoratna and, and he'd be looking at carving out 40 or 50 metres out of there. And uh, Isipatana only, did, only managed to get maybe 24 metres out from their own try line and you can see the, the strength of the wind. Muller with a good throw into his number two jumper. Chaniviratna goes straight through the gap. Chatra Chaniviratna is causing all sorts of problems to this Isipatana defense today. Gunavadana screams for his uh, forwards to come in. Tarinduri always picks up and with the help of Smula at his back goes a few meters. Dumming is uh, Sachit Silva. And unfortunately, again, St. Joseph's untidy ball retention. Yeah, look, he's, uh, that's not the first time I've seen Senna right now make a, make a break from 10. He sort of holds the ball out. Looks like he's going to pass and pass. He's not going to pass. He's going to go through the hole. But once he goes through the hole, I'd like to see him actually draw the last man and pass. That time then, there was a man on the outside of him. He went straight through that gap, half gap it was, managed to get through. If he offloaded... They would have been well into the backfield. Yes, St. Joseph's once again. It'll be a scrum for Isipatana College. Isipatana giving it back to St. Joseph's, not contesting in that mall. Pereira asking the question there. Ref, what was that about? Gihan Pereira's back from the sin bin. Has a couple of words with Vikas Rimadava who... Looks like he's uh, got fire in his belly tonight. But uh, it was a right call again from referee Carter. They transferred that ball before the engagement came in. And that's always a problem because uh, you've got players in front of the ball. Harit Bandara will be looking to get a good platform here. Devin Gunaratna does well. And his forwards now need to regroup. And they do so. And Anjana Kulasekara has done excellently to thump this ball down several meters. And Chaminda wrestles the ball away from Kavinda, who looks like he might just have stepped out. Yeah, that was a bad mistake there by that, that player going back. St. Joseph's really needed to get, get some points there from that little foray into the 22. They were in the red zone, in the danger zone. And they were there for a long time, so they come out of the blocks firing. As, as you see, the line-out stats won by um, Azibatana, seven, and lost two as they put the ball in. They come out with fire in their belly, and they need to take some points from the first five minutes. Angela with a lovely line-out ball off the top. Devin Gunaratna somersaulting over the Alvis's tackle. The Alvis back to make another tackle on the halfback, but uh, not before... Sudhir Agayanath has done well. The lazy runner getting in the way a little there, but Sumudu Rankotge, his first real run. Three Josephians to bring him down. And now they've got space on the outside if they can shift it quickly. Vimadava takes it to ground, makes it available for his halfback. Looks at the little chip kick, he spots the space. It's not going out. 
and the ball is all over the place and now Chatra Seniviratna will try to run it back and Sumudu Rankotge just has a little bit of a go at the uh, Josephian playmaker Offside says, uh, they're, or straight in from the side says the referee. Good little chip from Harit Bandara there. Really played what was in front of him. Yeah, that's right, Nick. They, they were, he was playing for the advantage and they, they often do put those kicks in as we see a, a, another Twitter coming in from, uh, I thought it was from Donald Trump, but it's not. It's go the green machine. But um, so you, you saw him recognise that there was space in the background. In the, in, the, in the backfield and he just put that kick in and St. Joe's looked like they were in real trouble there but now they have an opportunity to, to close the gap as Chamut Fernando lines up to uh, get this score on par it's through it's 8 point all at the 48 minute mark Sumudran could had not touched the ball and not run forward in that first half so far. The second half, first touch he got, got three players, got about 15 to 10 minutes, gave that go forward ball for AC Patana College. Very crucial how he plays in the next next 20. Yeah, I'm very happy you mentioned that actually. It's good to see him come in and make an, have an influence on the game because uh, it looked like he was a passenger earlier on in the first half. But now he's coming. His impact is that he can run hard and straight and start drawing in defenders. Um, as Steve Hansen says, he says that about uh, Sonny Bill Williams. He's like an old meat pie that attracts flies. And uh, one man that has been excellent for Isi Padana today hasn't been expected to be just his second start for the Greens. But Anjana Kulasekara has really done well with the ball at his foot and also taking it to the line. Asked to fill some big shoes of Randy Silva, who has moved to number 12. He's been excellent today as well. So parity is returned on the scoreboard after that monster kick from Chatur Ratna just before half time. Sorge and Josephs go out into a three point lead. They'll need to hit back quickly now. Not allow Isipatana back into this. And not straight says the referee. So a very unusual not straight call earlier today as well. Nathan Harris to Kieran Reed. And all those heads buried in the mall, none of them can hear the referee's whistle. No, 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 some more line out. Referee Carter losing a little bit of patience. Sven Muller cannot believe that it wasn't straight. Most hookers can't. I'm, I'm with you, Sven. But uh, it's the referee you need to convince, and he's not going to change his mind. But I did notice there, Van Kotke, the. Um, as we see a replay. Well, we'll let you decide, viewer. But uh, as as that little melee started to come to to eventuate, I saw Ran Kotke come in and just have a little word to his players, and that's the calming influence that he needs to bring. Steady, steady, steady. Josephian scrum hasn't really exerted the dominance we thought they might. Standing up in the front, but uh, they've held them well, Isipatana. Kulasekara now with the wind at his back. You can see that he's been instructed to kick. And uh, it goes out on the full. But the referee says that uh, the Josephian line had come up offside. Here's Vikas Vimadava, who has been excellent today. Really looks like he means business. And here's his opposite number. Tehan Seniratna has made some barnstorming runs himself. And the youngster Kulasekara is given the responsibility of kicking with the wind, and it's a good one. So Isipatana keep churning out these fly halves like Pakistan churns out fast bowlers. Must be the green in the jersey. Not sure about that, but this is the second fly half for, for this season. And if you ask Graham Henry, he'll tell you how many fly halves you need to win a championship. Four. 
four is the answer to that one, uh, Dinuk. That one is a little bit overthrown. And St. Joseph's managed to uh, get a turnover ball now. A chance to attack. They need to uh, do this in the opposite half. Tarindu de Alves plays half back. And his pass is a wobbly one, so Chatura Saniviratne is forced to put this high but not very far. And the knock on comes from the Isi Patana player. And St. Joseph will have a nice attacking platform here. It looked like there might have been a player that was in front of the kick there that didn't retire outside the 10 that was just advancing towards that as we see the handling errors uh, five for St. Joseph's and six for Izzy Batana that the referee might have just missed there the kick didn't really go far enough it looked like that some of the players might have gotten caught offside but as we watch it's a scrum to St. Joseph's the ball pops out the same channel just missed there Yes, Sumudu Rankotge going into contact, a bit hesitant to going into, into that contact, Sumudu Rankotge. Not that normal use of speed, you see, here's Anjana Kulasekara trying to step his way through. Harit Bandara, off to Chamod Fernando, has Silva on the outside, doesn't pass, goes into contact. And holding on, gives away a penalty for St. Joseph's. Holding on also, he had three players outside him, pass it. Yes, he really should have passed there. Not often that you see Chamos Fernando butcher an overlap, but he certainly did there. Hasn't been able to impose himself on this game so far, so perhaps a little anxious to do too much, which is uh, not what he needs to do today. Just needs to do enough, needs to do his job first. And draw and pass is what uh, coach Plasinta Di Costa will be screaming. These two lads also will be tense. Looking at their Hornets, what can they do here? Sven Muller will need to get this one in straight. Does so. Well won there in the front by Nimesh Kavinda. And here starting the Dualbis running a good truck line. Seni Ratna, lovely uh, long pass but didn't find the man. Kavinda is dragged down by Sabanaika, who's come on. Hey, 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 hey. The number oh. five jersey. Number 25 jersey, rather. Gihan Pereira hits Please, this one up powerfully. It's a good counter ruck. By Isipatana. Slow that ball down. Tehan Seni Ratna. Shouldering off one challenge. Still staying on his feet. It's physical stuff going on here. And uh, it's lost forward by Seni Ratna in that contact. Lasinta Di Costa doesn't smile easy. Maybe in 25 minutes, maybe not. So there we see that attack that St. Joseph's have got where they put it one, one pass out from the ruck instead of taking it up the pick and drive. Seems to be paying off for them. They're getting players to go there and, uh, and, and to, so they're hitting that with, with numbers. So that seems to be working for them. And also it takes players away from the actual ruck. So you don't have eight players. What I've been watching so far is that they're spending too many players in at the ruck when they've already ruck won the ball. Another tweet says all the best Patana. And here's uh, Devin Gunaratna. Breaks off that scrum. Had Chamod on the outside. Now Bandara. Kicks straight into a Josephine and it bounces back to him. Chaturas and Viratna was the player. No scrum half. Silva comes in. Taking on to go contact is Gayanath now. Still waiting for Harit Bandara to come and clear this ruck. Off to Anjana, taken back inside the 22. Cannot kick it out on the full. Perfectly weighted kick. Well inside the St. Joseph's 22. And here's Sachit Silva. Trying to run from the own half. Good tackle made up on him. No hands. Some tight Josephian players running back still. There's no one on the outside for the skipper. He puts the kick behind. He has a great opportunity for Isipatana College to counter-attack. And the two, the two are the best out there. 
Chamud Fernando and Harik Bandara combining on the far side, but no way through that. Kula Sekara. Off to Vikas Vimado taking the ball into contact. Kula Sekara once again. Silva. Passing it off to uh, Anjula. It's Bandara once again. Off to the skipper. Skipper not going into contact. Just giving the ball to his forward to set it up. Bandara once again. Fernando. Fernando runs across. Has players on the outside slipping through. He is uh, De Silva. And he knocks the ball forward. So good passage of play for Isipatana. Building up but not going through that defensive line. It was the change of, change of angle, the change of line. He that player just straightened and almost got through the hole. Has just got caught by the back of his jersey. So you might see a replay here. See him just stop, straighten, almost through. Looking for the offload. Really needed to hold on to that ball a little bit stronger. Wonderful tackle there by Vinul Fernando and an excellent camera angle as well, showing us the technique there. How players have been trained to slap the ball away from the attacking player. Beautifully done by the Josephian skipper. Here's some running repairs to Shehan Eranda. Just getting his uh, already heavily strapped knee, further strapped knee. Looks like he's got a mind of its own there. He's uh, not in great shape, Shehan Eranda. He has charm in the, just couldn't get the ball away. If he did, Chamod Fernando or Silva were definitely in for the try. Good scramble also there by Channa Ashoka who's come on at scrum half. Replacing Russia and Gunawadana. Chatra Seneviratna didn't have a lot of time and the clearing kick finds Chaminda again, they're looking to bring down Chamot Fernando, the danger man, stands strong until his support gets there. And here's some space now. Anjana, looking to get outside the winger, doesn't survive the clean out. And excellent defensive work once again from St. Joseph's there, forcing the holding on error. Joseph and uh, the sorry, the Isipathana trainers and physios looking on. As Chatra Seniviratna will try and get some field position from Jose to launch an attack. Shanaka, this is where the game will be won or lost. In the last 20, you can already see St. Joseph's tired players on the far side, hands on hips, but Isipathana are ready and ready to run. So the last 20, which will be won or lost, what a final it's going to be. Well, Zipatana have a little bit of advantage here. They've got the wind with them, so um, whenever the pressure's on, if they put the ball up into the air, the wind should take it an extra couple of metres. Um, it gives them an advantage playing territory. What it does for the um, for St. Joseph's is that every time they kick the ball up, if they put an up and under up, the ball seems to hang in the air a little bit longer and it goes away from the defending players. Four-man line-out for the Josephians here. So they'll probably want to run their second wave of forwards off the first receiver. Well, it looks like they've packed them all directly behind the scrum, so maybe the uh, behind the lineout. So maybe they're going to form a driving mall. Going straight through the gap is uh, Gian Pereira. Isipatana not caught entirely napping. Here's uh, Muller. Ashoka directing traffic behind the breakdown. And now Tehan Seni Ratna. Here's uh, Muller again, been doing plenty of carrying. Trying to wrestle the ball off him is uh, Sudhira Gayanath. Ashoka again. This is a good passage of play from uh, St. Joseph's. This is where they wore down Dharmaraja. Chatra Seniviratna so strong in the tackle again. 
fighting his way towards the line. Joseph's need quick ball here. Oh, they'll opt to stay straight. Tarindu Rialvis goes over for the score. And some great work from the Josephian forward pack. Sven Muller was instrumental in that passage of play. Busted a few tackles. And uh, good orchestration also from Chan Nasoka, the halfback, who has been influential since he's come on. And the limping Tarindu Rialvis has scored the try. Yeah, you could see the halfback there waving his arms around like a bird um, coming into land. And that was, he was just telling the forwards just to get a little bit wider. They were a bit narrow for my liking. They were a bit too close as we look at the replay. And that's a metre from the try line. That's uh, Senaratne. He took the ball. He, was, he hasn't passed. It's been 62 minutes. He hasn't passed once. He was, was never going to pass there. He managed to get them over the advantage line. And that's where they needed to take one more metre. And they managed to do that. But it was all set up by their forwards. Taking that one-off uh, attacking play that the, attacking ploy that they've, they've used. Um, it's very good work. It's something I've introduced this week, and it seemed to be paying dividends. Yeah, seven faces from outside the 22 to the try line, and this eighth one was the try scored by uh, Tarin Durialvis. Big kick coming up. Sachin Silva. Off the left post it goes, so uh, 13 points to eight. I'd have to say, if, uh, if from the bench of the uh, Izzy Bartner team, they should be sending out a message to their number seven saying that the number 10's not going to run, not going to pass from St. Joseph's. So start getting out there and knocking them over behind the advantage line. Yes, I'm surprised that uh, the Izzy Bartner experience back row hasn't noticed this yet and uh, they're not attacking Chatro Seniratna as soon as he gets the ball. Dumps this one. Halfway to the moon and back. And uh, takes his team all the way up to half time, half, uh, the halfway line rather. So champion teams, you always, you always ask a champion team, what, what are you going to do now? What reaction are you going to have? You've been put under a little bit of pressure. There's some adversity. Now what are you going to do? So what is Izzy Patton going to do here? Atukor already throw into the line out. Well taken there, but uh, that was a harsh call, I thought, but referee says knock on. So it looks like they're starting to think, overthink things a little bit. There's uh, three movements there before that ball was even thrown. When the pressure's on, that's about the, that's the mental toughness we were talking about earlier. When the pressure's on, your ability to do the basics well is uh, is what what mental strength is all about. Binding, binding. Yes, Gihan Pereira, tackled behind the gain line though, hasn't been able to impose himself. The number eight, Devin Gunaratne, has had the measure of him today, and it's been beautifully turned over. And now they've got some space. Angelo Kolasekara to Randy Silva. Short ball to Sumudu Rankutke. It comes quickly for Bandara. Bandara dancing around, trying to find the best option. Finds it in the form of Anjana. Fernando now. And that's a lovely pass. Chaminda will step inside and give the short ball to Chamot Fernando. Chamot Fernando will go over for the try. No, the referee has called for a forward pass. Bilal Hassan is distraught. We'll go back and have a look at it, of course. It looked like it was flat, but the referee has called it forward. And the green shirts in the crowd cannot believe what they're seeing. And it was the pass from Udita Jayamana to Chamot Fernando that they're calling, or Chaminda that they were calling forward. We'll go back and have a look at it. And Sven Muller has uh, decided that it's time to 
break this momentum by going down for a bit as uh, good front row forwards do and as we speak Jayamana has a well earned rest number seven let's watch this here Chamot Fernando this is the pass that's fine and this pass was called forward and yes it might have drifted one meter forward Dinka Peer is calling it from the far side touchline the southern hemisphere that's flat but we're about five degrees north of the equator Fernando now oh that's a drop bad drop by Chamin the uncharacteristic mistake Sabanayaka good piece of defense Sachit Silva now who has been uh, dangerous every time he's touched the ball the penalty is coming given away by Sarah Singer who's just come onto the park so he's just come onto the park and he's a little bit anxious and a little bit uh excited about being here and he really wants to make a difference and so he, he chased after a ball that he didn't need to really Miluf has made some changes but there are a couple of injury bodies in the park already the Chan Akhile is one, the number 14 shirt his right shoulder is not looking good at all but he has kept in the park he has been complaining to Vindul Fernando for the past five minutes going down Nine penalties considered for St. Joseph's, eight by Isipatana. And from that point onwards, Sean Akila has not taken part in this game. So they're playing with 14. And uh, coach Nilufa Ibrahim insists on keeping him. Here's another player down. Looks like for cramps. That was Sachit Silva is doing plenty of uh, covering work today. And that looks like it wasn't close to being straight. So Isipatana will get a reprieve. A couple of crooked throws from Sven Muller as we keep seeing the tweets from uh, our fans watching all around the world. Good to have you all on board here at uh, the Milo President's Knockout Trophy Final, a gala event organized by Milo. And the stands are packed on both sides of the field. The lights are on here. It's spectacular at the race cross grounds. And the rugby on offer has been pretty spectacular as well. Both teams, no quarter asked or given. Bandara to the excellent Anjana Kulasekara, who puts this on a dime. And Sachit Silva is uh, dragged down in defense by Sabana Aika. And excellently turned over. Sachet Silva lying all over the ball, but uh, referee saying play on. Vimada will get smashed back in the tackle. The breakdown has been good. And Harit Bandara now spots a gap. Offloads, but uh, can't find Sabanaika. Sachet Silva lucky to get away with uh, blocking that ball coming out. Well, not only blocking the ball, he was holding on to the ball. As soon as he uh, went to ground, he looked to place the ball ball down. Uh, and as if other player came in and stole the ball, so he was lying on the ground, got up, grabbed onto the ball, and then stayed in that area, in that contact area, so the ball couldn't be cleared away. I'm not sure how the referee missed it. Steady, steady, steady. That's a better scrum from uh, Joseph Sasoka clears. There's only one place that uh, Chatra Seniviratna wants to play this game and that's in the opposition half. Sabanayaka juggles but it's gone backwards. And Chamot Fernando now will uh, look for Chaminder. He's got real pace, Navot Chaminder. Vinul Fernando has uh, been excellent in defence today. I haven't seen him too much with the ball in hand. But he's made some important interventions in defence. Kulasekar again with the wind at his back. St. Joseph's uh, will be happy to have this ball kicked at them for the remaining nine minutes of this game. Here's the danger man, Chatura Seniviratna. Stands so strong and offloads the back of the hand, Sunny Bill Williams style. Another good offload from Sean Akila. Channa Soka now to Tehan Seniviratna. This is where 
The balance of this Josephian side is so good. Tehan Sariratna just tripped over by Chamot Fernando's flailing arm. And uh, Seniratna will gleefully take this opportunity of the posts. And the referee will have a talking to. Play continues. You have to block it up next time. You have to remind your yellow card. And next time, and set that red. Very stern red finger pointing. Red warning to Tamot Fernando, who's already on a yellow. This to put it beyond a score. Yeah, just seven minutes to go on the clock and what a run from uh, Tehan could have passed there tackle made uh, by Chamot Fernando okay. and uh, if this kick goes in uh, it'll be a tough ask for Isipatana to score twice from here on And St. Joseph's will slowly start celebrating. And the kick is through. 16 points to 8. And the light should be switched on in Dali Road. Chaturaseni Viratna. 2 out of 200% today for him. But his aerial kicking has been very good. And the Joe's fans in the crowd are celebrating already. And well, they should because they've looked strong in this last quarter of the game. And again, a mistake from Isipatana. The same mistake that was made by the Josephians at the restart. So it looks very much like uh, St. Josephs will have the momentum with them. But let's not forget that this is exactly where Isipatana found themselves last week against St. Peter's. And the week before that against St. Anthony's as well. They managed to come back and win both those games. Will they be able to do it for the third time in a row? That's the question that needs to be answered in the next six minutes. One score is not enough. All Josephs need to do is uh, play the opposition, play in the opposition half. They've lost one scrum, the Josephians. They won't want to lose another here. Gihan Pereira now gets a good run in for the first time but he's knocked it forward hasn't been the best game for the number eight Bilal Hassan has a sip of water coaching staff having a look at their watches they know there's uh, very little time on the clock for them they look like three tourists waiting for their meal, don't they? There, the number eight, he, he took a heavy knock there. He's in, he's in a little bit of trouble. Ref's done well to, to stop the clock. Went straight into Randy Silva's knee there. Absolutely nothing intentional in it. But uh, the HIA will need to be had. They've got to get him off. He wouldn't want to go, but he can barely make it to the sideline. Oh dear, that's, uh, you don't need an assessment to see that he's properly concussed. So important player to lose at this time of the match. And don't forget to uh, join us on thepapre.com as we bring you exclusive videos, previews, reviews and updates of the Zimbabwe Tour of Sri Lanka which starts next week. Should be able to win that one. Surely. Is that the commentator's curse? It's famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not commentating the cricket, Paul, so I think uh, we'll be able to uh, live past that one. Here it is. Well, it was head on shoulder. And uh, if the TMO has a closer look at that, Randy Silva may not uh, play a further part in this game. Sabah Nayaka and uh, a couple of knock-ons have really let Isipathana down today. Well, that was actually a knock back, it looked like, from St. Joseph's, a hand coming in there. Uh, I'm surprised the referee's assistant on this side didn't see that. It sounded like the 
hundred or so referees assistants that are on the sideline actually saw it. They were all screaming. Handling errors which have costed the game for Sipatana 10. Handling errors for Sipatana 7 for St. Joseph's. Is Chan Nasho going to feed into the scrum? Good ball for him, straight to Chatura Seniviratna and he will put this onto his boot and a very high kick to the centre field. And he has an opportunity for St. Joseph's to break through, Chan Nasoka. Vinul gives it to his forwards, he's still running. Inside the 22 they go, St. Joseph's. Channa to Chatura Seniviratna. He's not going to pass. He has not done that. Had uh, Tehan Seniviratna on the outside with the back line, and the ball has been turned over by Sipatana College. And referee says it's a penalty. Well, uh, no. can look at that again. We'll see exactly what the penalty was for. Rankot ge getting a talking to again on behalf of his teammates. Saw him a little earlier, Sumudu Rankotge, just gesturing to his team, saying, What's going on, guys? And uh, Senior Ratna, doing a bit of a footballing number, saying that uh, he was taken around the neck, but he's fine now. He's hit fine there, but uh, that's the neck roll, I guess, from Rankotge. Hand around uh, the shoulder, around the neck. So technically, that is a neck roll, which players are not allowed to do anymore. You can see that for the first time, Isipatana have moved ahead in the penalties conceded stat. They've conceded 10, as opposed to St. Joseph's 9 means they've conceded the last few penalties which have really allowed St. Joseph's back into this game. Senior Ratner's kick is good and that should be the game for St. Joseph's. And the Josephian fans will now start celebrating in earnest. Their nervousness went down a little when uh, they went more than once go ahead and now it looks like they will start the celebrations four minutes early. Isipatana will need something of uh, epic proportions to come back from here. And the way they're playing, it doesn't look like they've got it in them today. No, the knock-ons, the, the uh, tactical mistakes, the... The, um, just the little errors, the, they've just been a little bit off their game. Maybe that injury toll has come, come home to uh, haunt them. Angela does well to win that ball in the line-out. It's used once. Here's Kulasekara, gives it to Randy Silva. Lovely read and an excellent leg drive. Vinul Fernando has been outstanding in defence today, the captain. He's really led from the front. And Randy Silva now will uh, try and return this ball with a little bit of interest. Vikas Vimadava cuts back in field. Fernando puts it uh, onto his boot. Probably not the best option there, especially not with two minutes and a bit to go. Yeah, look, I think... I think in the second half, it's been the forwards. It's been the forwards that have done it for St. Joseph. So they've just gone straight through the middle. Um, Tian Senaratno, he's a, he's a big prop. He's taken a lot of stopping. He's got a lot of forward momentum. Sven Muller as well, when he's had the ball in hand, he's always gone over the advantage line. And they've really paid, it's really paid dividends for St. Joseph's team. The, those forwards standing up and uh, taking it to the pack of Izzy Batana and They've come out on top, and I think they've built, they've built the momentum and they've uh, built the platform that St. Joseph's have needed. Anuranga Walpola still looking a little nervous, but uh, he's more than a score ahead, so 
I don't think he should be so stressed out. Sven Muller waits to throw in. You can see the momentum is clearly with St. Joseph's now. And uh, these big forwards that were huffing and puffing maybe 10 minutes ago are now full of energy, full of running. It's amazing what a momentum shift can do to a team. Nishipatana find themselves in their body language flagging just a little bit. Nice uh, throw to the back of the line out, but well, not very nice, says the referee. It's another third crooked throw from uh, Muller, so he won't be too happy about that. He's done well with the ball in hand, but as far as core skills go, his jumpers will not be thanking him. He has a little uh, opening on the blind side here if they want to try and use it. Isipatana haven't lost a scrum yet this game. They've won 12. Devin Gunaratna runs sideways. Chaturasana Yuratna drags him down in front of the posts. Here's Bandara. It's Rankotge. And here's some space. Sabanayaka will go over for the try, surely. Referee will come back to the TMO. The grounding didn't look certain. Sabanayaka needed to dive a little earlier. And the try is scored. The assistant referee says yes. But is it too little too late for Isipatana? Yes, I think it's a bit too late. Uh, just saw Shahan Akila saying that the match is over. And a couple of times Ishad Kadish stared at his watch which suggests I think there's no time left in his clock as well. Yeah, generally you can go straight to the referee and say um, we will turn down the conversion, we'll take the kickoff, we'll let them take the kickoff and we can come back and play that. But it has to happen straight away and it didn't happen just then. So uh, it looks like the 80 minutes is up. Here's Chamot Fernando. Puts it off the right post. And that's it. St. Joseph's College have won their first championship. And it's the Milo Knockout Champions 2017. As Chatura Seniviratna dances in front of Chamot Fernando. And what a season he has been having. Well, that's classy, isn't it? Really classy stuff from uh, Chatura Seniviratna. Devin Gunaratna doing very well not to respond to that uh, taunting. It's uh, unfortunate that he's played so well. And uh, lets himself down a little at the end. Must be a happy man. Minister Harin Fernando has been at the forefront of on Joseph's Rugby this season and the Josephians winning their first ever big championship their first visit to the final ends in a maiden victory of the Milo President's Knockout Trophy and Paul it was a game that St. Joseph deserved to win they did deserve the win that mean um, they played a little bit smarter as far as uh, looking at Izzy Bathman's strengths and weaknesses they moved the ball to the forwards just a little bit outside where, um, where Zibathana was set up to, to welcome them, to have a little welcoming committee. Um, I thought their kicking game was excellent. That kick at half, just before half time from our center out, now, from 55 meters out, that was telling. Um, they just seemed to hold momentum for longer. They came out of the blocks fast in the first half. They had all the momentum and all the pressure and they managed to score a try early on. In the second half, they did the same. They came fast out of the blocks in the second half, and they managed to... They didn't score any points in that first little bit, and it, it managed to stay for the first 20 minutes at 8 all. But then coming out of the blocks, they showed their intent, and they continued on with that after that 60-minute point. And after considerable investment into this team, it seems to have paid off for them, and they now have the trophy. Um, there's players running around all over the place. There's people running around all over the place hoping to get into a little skirmish. Yeah, the Jewish rugby 
flag flying high in the stands. And many of them said that St. Joseph's didn't know how to win the championships. They proved them wrong and they are here as the champions of 2017. Josephine, Josephine crowds in the stands. And they'll be celebrating late into the night. But nothing to put away from this easy partner team. Shanaka, the quarter final, they beat St. Anthony's by a point. Semi final against St. Peter's. And uh, remember, there was about five to six key players injured in that 23. In the starting 23 for Isi Patana, and they managed to come again and put a show that they have been doing right throughout from 1996, winning about seven trophies. And uh, yes, they'll be sad today, but I think they have made their school proud once again. Yes, several injuries, and I'm not sure about the wisdom to risk Sumudu Rankot Gay. It was his last game for his team, that's for sure. But uh, he, when he had the ball in hand, he didn't look nearly as dangerous as he had looked all season. He was uh, half-baked into the contact as well and uh, not as much of a defensive threat as he would have been. Had the ball in space for that last try to Sabah Nayaka. It was then. It was only then that Rankot Gay and uh, Fernando changed hands. Here's the first try. Chatra Seniviratna busting through. And this was where Isipatana needed to have picked themselves up. Anjana winning the ball nicely for Devin Gunaratna's first try here for St. Joseph's. It was five points all for a long while in that uh, first half after this. And that was a smash, I think, Chamod Fernando. Was a little worried about whether his shoulder connected. So that was at the 30 point, 30 minute mark, and and here we see St. Joseph's just breaking out here. Chavia, he, he he had space on the outside, and he had players he could have gone to, but he he got funneled into the middle. And uh, this is just before half time. Is he going to give away a penalty there? Man, they said winning from the side. Strange, a strange ruling, but um. Senoratne, and there's that monster boot of his. Three points. Takes it to uh, eight points to five as half time's called. And that's Izzy Patna just coming back and, and evening up the score, so it's eight points all at that point. This was that uh, run by Tehan Senoratne that created this breakdown for Tarindri Alves to score. Here it is, Chamot Fernando just bringing him down with an ankle tap and uh, deemed not to have come through the gate there. That was the penalty that changed the game. Here's Seni Ratna again. They really needed to muzzle him and uh, here's a neck roll which gave away the other penalty. Sumudu Rankotke there giving away the penalty. Senior Ratna striking that nice and clean. And that's really where they started to kick away. They had, um, as Ibatana came back and scored that try right, on the, right at the death, but it was too little too late. They had a try ruled out earlier on, about five minutes earlier. So we can see pictures of uh, a little bit of crowd disturbance. Looked like that might have all kicked off from um, the St. Joseph's lack of humility after taking victory. They sort of flaunted it in, in the face of the players and um, as much as they deserve the win, that's not the way to act once you uh, take the victory. No, it's not and especially not in a school by arena. You can't uh, condone that kind of behaviour. There needs to be respect between the two teams and uh, the only thing worse than a whinging loser He's a gloating winner. But St. Joseph's, 19 points to 8. They deserve to win over the 80 minutes. What happened after that, we won't talk about here. That's for someone else to deal with. But uh, 10 penalties conceded, and that's where Isipatana perhaps lost the game, as well as that next stat, handling errors, 10 handling errors that they made. But uh, that was something that uh, you don't expect Isipatana teams to do. And kicking success, 25% to 60%.
So the stats there telling. And uh, player of the match, Chatra Sanir Ratna. After Isipatana have uh, lost the final and St. Joseph's have won their maiden trophy after their first foray into a Milo President's Trophy knockout final. Vinul Fernando will be the man who uh, receives the trophy on behalf of his team for the first time in the history of St. Joseph's. 19 points to 13, two tries apiece for the two teams and it was just uh, the three penalties that Chatra Seniratna knocked over that made the difference. He was also instrumental with the ball in hand, busting through several tackles and creating things for his runners on the outside. Vinul Fernando also deserves a mention, the skipper. He was absolutely outstanding in defense. And uh, the big forwards also, Sven Muller, Tehan Seniratna, all playing well. But uh, take nothing away from Isipatana College. They were outstanding as usual. An injury ravaged squad with a captain on one leg and uh, an all new fly half who was supposed to manage the game from the number 10 position. They did very well and they'll be a force to be reckoned with next year as well. We'll hand over now to the presentation ceremony where Harita Pereira waits. used to say when the going gets tough the tough get going that's the day everything changed Milo energy from the goodness of milk malt barley and chocolate brings out the best in you Milo fueling the winning spirit Nestle good food good life take me Tactics, attack, defense, pattern, back to the board, the rugby analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a wonderful finale to the uh, Milo President's Trophy 2017. Before we get to the real match presentation uh, Nestle Milo and uh, Schools Rugby Football Association have made it a special occasion to uh, identify a couple of uh, individuals and an organization which has been uh, a major force as far as uh, Milo Rugby is concerned. Cordial inviting Honorable Minister of Education Akila Viraj Karyavasam, our chief guest uh, for the evening. The Secretary of Ministry of Education, Mr. Sunil Hetyarachi, our guest of honor, together with the President of the Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association, Mr. B.A. Abheratna, to the uh, presentation area. It has been a tremendous uh, achievement to first uh, think about uh, Milo Rugby and then uh, take it over for 25 years of happening. And that is what uh, we are actually uh, celebrating Milo Rugby with uh, the schools uh, rallying round year after year to make it uh, such a big uh, story. And you all know what it has been uh, today. One of the uh, biggest performers uh, with uh, Milo President's Trophy and uh, Minos and uh, newcomers battling out uh, in the final today. You know the outcome. It has been a great story and an encouragement to the sport indeed. We are really talking about the spirit of the game, the sportsmanship and uh, whatnot. It's been a great occasion for us to have uh, our chief guest, the Honorable Minister of Education, Akila Viraj Karyavasan. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Che. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the first segment uh, is uh, an appreciation as far as uh, Milo Rugby is concerned. 25 years ago, when uh, the story started off, it was uh, very humble beginnings. But now, it's a great story. So, we would take this opportunity to thank and appreciate uh, an organization in the forefront of sports promotion and rugby in particular. Nestle Lanka, through their Milo international brand, has been nurturing schools rugby for 25 years. So, in appreciation, this token of appreciation will be received by the Vice President Beverages of Nestle Lanka, Mr. Norman Kannangara. A big thank you and uh, congratulations, Nestle. Next, uh, it'll be two individuals who had uh, taken it uh, upon themselves to make sure that uh, this Milo President's Trophy is a great success. In fact, uh, it became after Milo got involved with schools rugby. So here we are saying a big thank you and this token of appreciation to the special advisor to the Honorable Minister of uh, Education, Mr. Sunil Jayavira. He was then the Director General of Sports Ministry of Education 25 years ago. Well done, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your thoughtfulness and uh, supporting us right through. Yet another individual who would be recognized and felicitated is the Vice President of Corporate Affairs, Nestle Lanka. But 25 years ago, he was the Promotions Officer of Nestle. Mr. Bandula Egodake. 25 years of uh, Milo Rugby, Milo Schools Rugby, thanks uh, to the organization and the two individuals. We invite uh, the gentleman to be on stage as we move over to the uh, main segment. We would also now um, cordially invite uh, the uh, Senior Vice President of the Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association, Mr. Sarachandra De Silva, the Secretary, Mr. Denzil Darling, uh, the Treasurer, Mr. KSP Karunaratna. We would also cordially invite uh, the Consultant of Sports Ministry of Education, Colonel Manjula Karyavasam, together with the uh, Tournament Secretary of the Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association, Mr. Niroda Vijayarama, and uh, the respective uh, heads of the two institutions. The uh, special award today is uh, the green card uh, winner. There are no yellow cards, no red cards that we are talking about. It's the spirit of the game on the field and the uh, adjudicators uh, made sure that uh, that was a key factor for this uh, presentation to be made. Cordial inviting Mr. Norman Kannangara, Vice President Beverages, Nestle Lanka, to make this uh, first presentation, the green card uh, for the uh, spirit of the game performance on today. Tarindu Di Alves, St. Joseph's. Yet another initiative uh, from uh, Nestle Milo, the Milo green card. The spirit of the game and that's what we are trying to inculcate, the team spirit. And uh, here we are. Well done, Tarindu Di Alves. Next would be the player of the tournament award in the Milo President's Trophy 2017. I'm sure it has been a great occasion for everybody to be involved. Everybody gets a chance uh, to be your hero. But today, it has been a tremendous performance from him towards his team. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mr. Norman Kannangara will present the Player of the Tournament Award in the Milo President's Trophy 2017 to Chatura Senaratna, St. Joseph. An excellent performance through the season, but today it has been a tremendous. He comes from a huge pedigree of rugby. We thank Mr. Norman Kannangara 
and congratulate uh, Tarindu and Chatura for their individual awards uh, received. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's a big occasion for all of us. We take this opportunity to cordial invite our chief guest for the evening, the Honourable Minister of Education, Akila Viraj Karyavasam, to be involved with the presentation from now on. First, it would be the certificates and medals to be collected by the losers, the runners-up, despite the fact that they have played some wonderful uh, rugby even to the last dying moments. We invite uh, Isipatana to come and collect uh, their certificates and medals. A team uh, that was the defending champions uh, in four finals uh, straight up. It has been uh, 14 finals for them, led by uh, Sumudu Ratnayaka, coach Lasinta Di Costa, master in charge Sumedha Premisari, Prefect of Games Sana Perma. A moment to cherish for Mr. Premisari Apa, principal of Isipatana. It has been uh, their robust style of rugby that had to be conquered and uh, Despite uh, trailing uh, in the first half, uh, they managed uh, a lot of position in the second half. And it was only during the last few uh, moments that uh, the opponents actually got right on top of them. And that is uh, the uh, hallmark of uh, the green shirts. They showed out why they are such a big force in schools rugby over the years. At the Milo knockouts, uh, teams uh, don't uh, lose. They learn lessons, give a resounding uh, Milo clap to everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a round of applause for the runners up? Thank you, well done Padana. You wanted to see good fast open rugby Bruises everywhere, the sweat, that's what it's all about. We always say, Milo nourishing the ambition, everyone wins, going the extra mile, doing your personal best, falling down and getting back up. That's Milo, and that's what uh, these two teams have been doing today. Milo Rugby, extremely popular, and uh, you know why. You've been treated to some uh, excellent uh, technical skills and sportsmanship on the field by the two teams. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Patana. Okay, are there anybody else from Isipatana to receive? Okay, thank you very much. We now take this opportunity to cordially invite uh, the Honourable Minister to present uh, the uh, Milo President's Trophy, runner-up trophy to the uh, losing captain. Captain of uh, Isipatana, maybe invite Sumudu to receive the runner-up trophy for 2017. Well done. For a season well played on behalf of your team, great story. Milo, President's Trophy 2017, runners up, Isipatanu! Congratulations, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the big occasion, there's been a major media Interest, uh, as you know, the match was live. Uh, the presentation is live, streaming on uh, papare.com, on Dialogue uh, TV and uh, My TV. We cordially invite our chief guest and the honourable minister now to present uh, the uh, tokens of appreciation, the medals and the certificates to the winning team. They have been such an awful, awesome outfit. 
Here they are, Joes. St. Joseph's meeting uh, their high pedestal. Tremendous team performance today. Led by Vinol Fernando, coached by Nilupa Ibrahim, master in charge Prasanta Ranavera, Prefect of Games, Reverend Father Milan Bernard. And it's a happy moment uh, for the Rector Reverend Father Travis Gabriel. So Joseph's uh, played like the true champions they are. They had such a hype uh, after their performance uh, in the league. A lot of expectations. And now the delivery. The satisfaction and the sweat. Overpowering of a tackle, the pleasure of a takedown, the pull of the crowd, the Milo President's Trophy had it all then and now. Well done, St. Joseph's. On their maiden uh, appearance in uh, a Milo President's Trophy final, they come out on top and in uh, what great style. Well done. Great team spirit, superb execution. The fans, you have been wonderful. I know the special feature from Milo, the 16th man. You have been patronizing. We are extremely happy. Milo always innovating, always encouraging. Just like uh, the sponsor schools rugby, they also sponsor schools uh, netball. And of course, you know the uh, Milo Sports Colors Awards. I'm sure some of you would also receive uh, at that uh, glittering ceremony. It's simply the best. So when it started 25 years ago, you could only dream uh, after a quarter of a century that uh, such uh, high expectations and high achievements in uh, Milo schools rugby. A very proud backup team uh, for the Joes. The Dali Road outfit uh, certainly would look forward to many more top performances over the next few years. There are a few others who are not being seen at this uh, occasion. But everybody can really justify and be proud. Great story. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. They are the best, simply the best. Milo President's Trophy 2017 Champions, St. Joseph! Vinod Fernando, the captain. Marvelous performance. Thank the Honourable Minister and other distinguished invitees for being involved with us. Congratulations, uh, St. Joseph's. We would like to thank the all other participating teams. Milo, dueling the winning spin. It has been a great story for them. So on behalf of uh, everybody here, the Sri Lanka Schools Rugby Football Association and Nestle Milo. We say a big thank you for all of you for being involved in this uh, wonderful uh, finale and look forward to your participation with Schools Rugby right through. Not only Milo, everywhere. Thank you very much. Have a safe journey home. Good night from all of us.
There you go, that's the fireworks for St. Joseph's College who came into their first President Trophy final and they make it their first victory in the President Trophy. Joseph Hills victorious and Isipathana for the second time this season have to be satisfied being second. They were second in the league and here they are runners up of the President Trophy as well. That's it from us from the Papere.com. It's been a great pleasure bringing you the Milo Knockout Trophy 2017. And don't go anywhere, we will be bringing you all the sporting action live and exclusively on Sri Lanka's number one sports hub. And until we meet again, I'm Sudarshan Apere signing off alongside the technical and the production crew for the Papere.com, sharing the passion. Aya used to say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's the day everything changed. Milo Energy, from the goodness of milk, malt, barley and chocolate, brings out the best in you. Milo, fueling the winning spirit. Nestle, good food, good life.